All right, hey guys, uh, welcome to another art show with uh, myself and Tim. Mm, it's back. an art show. <laughs> yeah, well, we're back again, back mm-hmm. again to uh, you know talk about random stuff. <laughs> yeah, mostly related to art, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so um, yeah, what are we going to do this week, Tim? We're going to do some. What, what's the topic? Um, well, it's a. I guess it's hard. It's it's hard to give it a name, but. I wanted to talk about um, doing doing work that fits within a certain time frame, uh, and how that relates to how you sort of handle your own personal projects. So I, I guess there's like uh, you know a, a lot of the time, I, I think that one of the things that artists often miss is the ability to kind of put your own sort of thoughts down on paper, and um, you know I think that it, that doesn't really change if you're working professionally or you're a student, I think you, no, no matter what, what you're sort of doing, um, I think it, it becomes like really important to just be able to kind of, you know, get ideas that are in your head, right. And sort of put them into, into some sort of practice. Um, and I think often that's something that people sort of struggle with. Right. And I know that like students at CDW are coming up for some like holiday break time and I thought it'd just be good to talk about Santa, sort of how we can do that and maybe if there's some sort of uh, strategies right um yeah because um you know certainly i know that you do a lot of speed paints you know what i mean and and, and that sort of stuff and in, in, i don't know how much of that you do these days but that's something that you are sort of interested in um yeah yeah and, and for I've, sure and i've always been sort of into the idea of doing yeah like slightly I, I always like to kind of make sure that i'm not when i'm doing personal stuff that i sort of keep keep a time limit to it right so that i'm sort of i keep being sort of motivated um yeah and so i thought it'd just be good to sort of talk about some of those things right but it's a fairly amorphous topic but i guess it's it's the idea of sort of like you know should you do speed painting right like ha- what, what's the best way to sort of handle these things because i think it's it's the time is more important for a personal project in many cases than the actual like the detail that you get right i think you're much better off sort of spending a, a certain amount of time on a personal project even if that means you sort of don't really even get past the sketch phase sorry even if that means sorry you're better off doing something that's much more restricted in scope but sort of finish it than you are sort of you know trying to get you know a little bit through like a big project because i think if you build that momentum um i I think it kind of i think it kind of helps right yeah so i've got um i always tell this story to my digital painting class which is you know whenever somebody sort of comes in and we go week one oh you can paint whatever you want and then they try and paint something that's you know a a floating city with you know 500 spaceships and stuff as their first painting that they're gonna try and do is like a first go digital painting Mm -hmm. i'm just like that's always gonna end in disaster (laughs) because yeah like even if you gave that as a brief to like myself or tim we'd be like oh crap like how are we gonna do this this is gonna be really hard like job that we've got to do and if you're trying to do that when you're kind of starting out like yeah it's what happens is you just become frustrated with things and you're not really learning that much stuff actually you're just kind of getting into a um a bad state of like kind of anxiety and pain and disillusion <laughs> because yep. because like it's really hard so i think you're really spot on there tim where it's like start off with simple stuff start off with doing simple stuff well and like build up those build yourself up to doing the you know floating city with a thousand spaceships and stuff right like yeah yeah just ease into that stuff draw one spaceship first <laughs> get that looking good then yeah. worry about trying to do multiples <laughs> yep. yeah well i mean the, the other thing is that you know it, it's no easy feat to complete like to to finish a, a, an art project over multiple sittings i think that's something that um <clears throat> people kind of assume right you you just kind of do and, it, and it's sort of easy and uh, i think that's actually quite a challenge to 
right? It's, yeah, it's, it's quite a it's challenge hard to, to kind of yeah. maintain focus um, mm -hmm. over, you know, over that sort of period of time. How big is this canvas? Huge. <clears throat> and I'm sure a lot of these guys know that with, um, with kind of like doing homework and stuff where you've got to like kind of, yeah, you're going back to back to it over and over again to get it done. And sometimes the life, you know, kind of gets sucked out of it. And you're like, oh, God, yeah. I hate this thing, <laughs> you know, because you're just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. But, um, yep. yeah, so but if you're doing personal kind of pieces, you don't really have to do that. So, And we really know, like, I mean, we've got pretty good anecdotal evidence now where we have – you know, one of our class because obviously this is a Twitch stream. It's not just going out to our students, but uh, you know, obviously, probably our students are a vast majority of the people kind of watching this stuff. But um, mm -hmm. like we, you know, we have classes, boot camp classes, where we have like 110 people in a class, and so out of those 110, I would say 60 to 70 of those students actually find it really tough doing a personal piece each week. You know, so yeah. there's obviously a a barrier. You know, and we get a lot of questions like, oh, can I do this? Can I do that? Can I? It's a personal piece, so you can do whatever you want. So, you know, if you're doing animation or you're doing VFX or you're doing characters or creatures or whatever it is, it's it's your own personal piece, so you can, you can do whatever you want. But I think the point I'm getting at, Tim, is like I think sometimes people find that choice kind of paralyzing. Yeah. And they kind of go like, I can do whatever I want. Uh, so I'll just do uh, nothing because <laughs> yeah. no one's telling me what to do. Right. Yep. So, um, yeah. Well, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, the question is, it's, yeah, you can, so you can do anything. Like, sure, that's, that's cool. But there's no such thing as you can do anything. Right. Like, there's, can, can you, like, what can you already draw? You know, like, what, what are you already sort of good at? You know, like, what, and, um, what can you do in the time that you're going to give yourself, right? So there's a lot of questions that I think sort of come before that are very important. And I, and I think that like not answering those questions is, is integral to the, in many cases, is, is a big part of the, the failure, right? So, so not sort of saying like, oh, you can do anything. It's like, yeah, you, you can do anything. But as soon as you sort of say, well, how long am I going to spend on this? Then... You know, you, you all of a sudden you can't do anything. You know, because you, you, if you've got an hour, right, you can't sort of sit there and do some crazy, you know, battle scene with like a million characters or whatever. Um, so yeah, it, it is a matter of like, well, you can do anything, but there, there are parameters, I think, always, and I think understanding those is is really integral to sort of figuring out how how to get a good image out of it, right? How to how to feel confident about it. Um, and I think the other thing is that, you know, d depending on when you're going to do this image and how much focus you want to put into it, you know, if your sort of timeline is going to be sort of stretched, right, to complete that image, um, that's going to be stressful. And, and, and you might want that or you might not. You know, I, I think it's important to think about all of these things, like sort of what what's the scope of the piece you're trying to create, right? What's the... What's the purpose of it? Um, yeah, and, and and so I think it's often right. Often some of those things I feel like sort of get get a little bit sort of lost in the mix, um, and and that's the sort of thing that I try and sort of think about, right? Or, or certainly I found that you know if if I think about that stuff, then um, I, I have a better result, right? Because a lot of that feeling, right, of people starting a piece and then getting halfway through it you know, or whatever, and, you know, and, and it's sort of, you know, like not finishing it or, or whatever, um, is that you're having an expectation, right? So there's an expectation of you being able to finish something or get through it, and that doesn't work, you know what I mean? So, and, and then it's like, uh-oh, you know, you feel bad. So I think having a good expectation, right, like a, a sort of a, right, like like an expectation that you're able to meet and that you can reliably meet, and also just something to fall back on, right, in terms of that. So so knowing like, you know, if, if you give yourself X amount of time to finish something, you know, knowing that you can finish something in that time, I think is like really, is really powerful. And that means, you know, also it builds confidence, right, to kind of constantly be able to sort of match that. So, and, and I think that confidence is, is something that, you know, if, if you don't have it, it's, it's going to feel really bad. 
Um, yeah, so um, uh, Bradley kind of asked a question, made a statement. Um, <clears throat> this is actually really good because it relates to a big personal project I want to do, but don't think I have technical skill to serve my vision justice. Mm. And yep. I think this is like a really common thing, right, Tim? Like this is, this is kind common. of like a cool topic to talk about because I feel like I feel like myself and Tim, we're like, we've all done this stuff. Like every single artist has this has this kind of thing where you're like, oh, I've mm-hmm. got this really big project that I want to do and I think back over the so I'm a really in terms of in terms of a um a uh, you know what's that was it like a, a, a case a case study I'm mm-hmm. very very uh, <laughs> very good case study like I think over the years there's always been things that I've kind of like wanted to develop um, yeah and, and when I look back they're actually been probably pretty close to kind of becoming a thing whatever whatever that is right um. But, you know, I remember when I was at, like, you know, kind of in uni or finishing uni or just before or just after, like, you know, be like, oh, I want to do a comic or I want to do like this or that or whatever. But, um, yeah, a lot of times because you don't quite have the technical skills, it's kind of, you know, impossible to really do what it is that you kind of actually want to do. Yeah. And I think trying to uh, kind of temper those expectations with reality of what it is that you can like kind of technically do is is a really important thing to kind of uh to kind of do but having said that also at the same time you want people to kind of like reach out be creative push those boundaries of things because that's where some really big kind of learning can come from as well yeah so it's um but i guess it's that kind of thing where it's like I don't even really know any good examples of anyone that does some project in university that goes on and becomes like a thing. I mean, it yeah. kind of happens from time to time, but like, the, you know, it's like 909, well, 999,000 times out of a million. It's it just whatever you're doing is some, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg. Facebook, yeah, sure, um, yeah, but like that type of thing. Like, it's very uncommon for that project to happen when you're kind of like nineteen, twenty years of age, just because yeah. you just don't have that like kind of mileage of of uh, you know kind of work experience to to draw from to 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 do these things. I don't know how how do you relate that in terms of comics, Tim? Like, is that something you felt? in kind of comics and stuff and it took a while to get that you know to then do the book that you did and yeah all that kind of stuff yeah i mean i i think that i think that question is sort of tricky right and i've i've sort of known people who have right i have heard the the approach which is sort of that if you're 20 you really don't have any stories to tell Mm. you haven't had an interesting enough life to actually have anything (laughs) really meaningful to say um which we will we, for most people who are trying to tell a story when they're sort of 20 right is kind of infuriating to hear um and i guess like that's it's sort of true and it's not true like there have been people who sort of you know become sort of authors when they're sort of younger yeah right um but you know like who is that there, there was some the people there's a couple of those people right who made like wrote fantasy stories when they're kind yeah, of like i'm 14. sure there's tons of examples there, yeah, there's but... a famous one that i i forget that got made into movies it's a guy like a european kid anyway the, the thing is they're mostly very derivative right um so i think what you're talking about is that thing of like being really like i've got this really big idea you know and i'm very sort of young and i'm just starting it out and i'm in uni right and you know like worrying about that um all i'd say is i'd say you might be the harry potter you know story right it might be that thing where like you know one of the first books you write becomes sort of super you know popular like who cares right that i don't think that's important um but i certainly wouldn't sort of yeah i i I wouldn't don't let any of that stop you making stuff right yeah yeah because i because i think there's 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 so many sides to that story right one is if you and none of this is advice this is just me sort of talking through (laughs) it right but 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 one of it is you know if you sit there trying to write your magnum opus when you're young um if you want to do it then do it but do it don't don't stop doing other things because you're trying to do this sort of big thing 
um, it's really important that whatever you're doing, basically, you just have to do something. And um, I think a lot of people fall into that trap of saying, oh, but I want to make this like really cool thing, but I'm not quite good enough at it yet. Um, so I'll just sit there doing nothing. Right. And I think that's like a terminal failure point. Right. Like that is a trap people fall into. And it basically the problem with any creation is. And I think this is part of the advice I sort of give when I talk to people who want to become illustrators or anything is that the longer you build up an idea in your head without actualizing it in any way the further the, the more it's the more the expectation of it builds right so your expectation of how good it's going to be builds and every time you put off making it right because it you don't think it would be good enough now the pressure that you put it off for a reason and that it is going to be better when you have skill later on builds and so typically what you find with those magnum opus pieces is they're normally not very good. Um, and you can kind of often see that with like directors. I mean, like M night Shyamalan is like a great example of that, where probably the first movies he made was sort of um, dictated by studio needs and maybe an, like, you know, a, a need to be a little bit more um, commercial. And then as soon as he kind of was able to do what he actually wanted, everything sort of became rubbish. Right. So just because, <laughs> just because, you have like an idea that you want to create and you get success doesn't mean that people are going to finally then like the great idea that you have always had since you were kind of young. Right. Like I've seen that pattern happen. So that the real trick is like, there's no real guarantee, but something that will happen is the more you put off doing a big project, the more pressure you're going to have for it to be a certain way. And again, to go back to what I was saying, the more you, the more you have expectation in your mind, right? The, the less likely you are to actually have that thing happen and you'd like it, right? Because it's, it's almost like you've built it up in your mind so much and it's never really been visually realized. It's never been actualized. And so what happens is you kind of have this unreasonable expectation of it. And uh, I think this is a pattern I've seen. I mean, I've, I'm not just saying this because this certainly has been something I've experienced, but it's also just something I've sort of seen and heard. And, you know, if you read a lot of books on writing, um, yeah, it can be tricky, right? If you're saying, like, oh, I've got this really cool big idea, but I'm just not quite good enough to make it yet. Well, you better figure out something else to do and forget about that for now or just do it because it really doesn't matter. But if you get into one of those other patterns, you, you tend to find that there's a lot of dead ends there. Um, and I think the dead ends are not creating a magnum opus, but thinking about it all the time, right? I don't think it's a good idea because, um, you know, you, you don't really have any guarantee that that's going to be great. And I think for a lot of people, it becomes very hard for them to tell whether or not that is actually something they want to like, you know, that they actually like, like you become so emotionally caught up in it that it's just impossible to see it for what it is. Um, so I think the real key is just, you need to create and complete things. Um, yep. And that there's so many traps for people because um, the, the other thing is that I think a lot of when we begin um, doing art, I think a lot of people kind of imagine that artists who are sort of advanced sort of can create anything. And I, I really just don't think that's true. I think one of the major things that really good artists do is they, they carefully select from their skill set and their ideas, right? And they're able to kind of come up with ideas that are going to be good for them to create right? Because yep. they've sort of developed their skill set around a particular sort of motif or visual motif. And so you kind of look at them and they might have this technical, and it looks like, oh, they could draw anything. And it's like, yeah, they could, but they're, they're really good at drawing this stuff because they're sort of, they have a good visual library. They have a good, you know, history of drawing stuff that way. And so what you're actually seeing is someone being very careful about how they select what image to create. And I think one of the tricks is that because an artist probably has a wider range, if they're a professional, it looks like they can kind of do anything. 
but they're still making very careful selections about type of compositions they like the type of compositions that fit the, the, the style that they have right there's all these decisions that are being made and because they have a broader range it feels like they're able to do anything but selecting from your skill set i think is like super important as well right so understanding yourself what can you create now that's good right and to spend a bit of time thinking about that and practicing saying like well yeah i want to create this awesome thing but i can't i think that the skill you're you're, you're going to appreciate building is sort of saying well what can i create now with this that's cool and to spend time doing that i think that's the best right that's the best thing to do and, and that includes the amount of time you're sort of given right again i think a, a professional artist is often just very very good at having a really really solid read right on what they can create um in a particular time in a particular style right and, and they just kind of do it and it looks like oh that was really easy but it's just that they didn't make any boneheaded decisions <laughs> they didn't say oh, i'm going to create this thing that i've never created in this amount of time and then you see them sort of really fail at it um because there's that sort of calibration and i think you have to realize that you're in this position now right there are some things that you're going to be good at drawing and it's probably worth thinking about as you make up ideas for projects to, to, to do that they're, they're taken from your actual skill set and that the amount of new stuff you have there is, is small, right? We want that amount of stuff to be pretty small as in the new stuff that you add as you're doing a project is like two or 3% of like an increase. So that, you know, I think ideally if you want that good level of challenge, you you should sort of stay in that sort of you're adding you know max like five percent of like new stuff like if you haven't drawn this if you're saying like you know oh i want to draw a fantasy scene and you've never drawn fantasy before just try and draw a fantasy character i think that's probably I mean? the thing that is kind of like when you're starting out that's the tough bit right because like a lot of times when we set assignments and stuff it's like the the person may have not ever done that type of thing before so then yes. all of a sudden you're trying to like learn visual library and just how do i draw this rock yeah <laughs> just like all at exactly. the same time and it's actually like it's really hard like it's yeah so so like when you're seeing someone demo stuff like tim doing this here it's like he you know he's uh, i know you've drawn lots of this kind of stuff tim so he's just yep. you know it's like he's just doing something he's comfortable with and just drawing it and there might be a few little bits and pieces that you're sort of experimenting with in here um, but not stacks, you know? Yeah, um, totally. Yeah, and, and you know, you, I think over time you, you, you get more comfortable with kind of like adding bits and pieces in and, add, you know, experimenting here and there and stuff like that as well. And, and then you're yep. just drawing upon all the other, like, all the other things that you know. So you might be here, like here kind of being like, okay, I know I've got this creature and this character on the rocks and that. I've got that all under control. And then I'm going to start adding in some things that maybe I'm not, you know, sure is going to work, but let's just give it a go. Let's draw yeah. it out on the paper, see how it goes. Oh, yep, that went okay. Let's just continue down that that path. So Yeah, and if it doesn't, I'm going to be like, oh, no, nah, let's just retreat, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> and because you're doing it live on a stream, you'll try and do that in a uh, in a way in which people won't notice. But, um, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so but when you're, when you're kind of like for you guys at home doing this stuff is um, just – you know, if you if you're not very good at drawing anatomy or whatever, just <clears throat> start with just a few studies. Start with just trying to like look at some references and understand, you know, like structure and and construction and perspective and like as, actually someone reached out to me today kind of asking, I want to get better at drawing, like how do I do that? And I'm like, Well, you're in the intro to perspective class where you're learning like spheres and cubes and boxes in 3d it's like just do that mm -hmm. <laughs> that's all you need to do and everything will you know start to come together and if you want to do more characters then you just apply the spheres and boxes to people and if you want to do more landscaping environments you start applying that stuff to trees and rocks and yeah, yeah all that kind of stuff so you just like just slowly, well, I, slowly I think also the, the question i think the question there is like <clears throat> I think often people are asking that question like that's the answer right just draw characters 
yeah. you know, and, and practice all this stuff. But I think the other question is like, well, how do I enjoy the process of learning how to draw characters? Mm-hmm. That's probably the, the, uh, the trickier question, right? Yeah. Like yeah. how, how do I do it the most, mm-hmm. you know? And, and so what I'd say is I'd say you, you, you do want to kind of, I would say you, you want to sort of think carefully about, yeah, like how, how are you going about this and what, what are you going to focus on? Like how much of this new stuff? Cause I think that the thing is the danger is like, if you're sort of consciously, if you're consciously trying to do something, which I think is different from like just sketching your sketchbook. Right. And so you just sort of pick up your sketchbook, bam, away you go. Right. Like that's something you can do. Like just draw in your sketchbook. What? It doesn't matter. Right. Sketching is, um, I think Ken, I, we, we, we know Ken Wong, right. Who was a, um, like a great artist who's an Adelaide guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he sort of said sketching is drawing without a plan. I think that's a really cool definition of like sketching, right? Yeah. Um, so it's sort of like that's sort of what you do when you don't have a plan, right? And drawing is sort of when you, you do have a plan. <laughs> um, and so it's the same sort of thing. It's just that sketching is kind of like, and I think that's often what people don't really get when, you know, we sort of say like, oh, you know, let's, you know, draw some stuff from your sketchbook, you know, or just do sketchbook drawing. Um, yeah. It's like a lot of the times that's just about, you know, like if, if that's a struggle for you, I think that's something that's worth cultivating is the idea of just saying, here's your sketchbook, draw something. Um, and I, I think like a lot of people do sort of struggle with that. Um, but I don't really know why. I don't have any answer to that because I'm like, well, don't you just want to draw things? <laughs> That's one of the things that I, I struggle with. Like, because sometimes people, because obviously, like, I run a school, so I get lots of people going, like, oh, I'm you're sort of struggling with motivation and how do I do this and that sort of thing. And sometimes I actually find that the trickiest question to answer because, yep. like, I'm just like, isn't doing this just like eating ice cream? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just like anytime when I'm just kind of like, oh, yeah, I can just paint for a few hours like on a stream or doing class demo or whatever. I'm like, this is great. <laughs> I'm like, I yep. don't have to do emails. I don't have to have meetings. I don't have to, you know, it's just like, oh, man, yep. this is this is where it's at, you know. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. And, and I, think, I think everyone that is kind of like a uh, – well, most people that – you know make it all the way to becoming a professional artist it's it's they they tend to also have those feelings too where it's like it's kind of all that you kind of want to do not everything you know like it's good to have other hobbies and family and you know other stuff going on in your life but but a lot of times you know people that do do this for a profession it it is pretty all-consuming yes um, totally because you're kind of doing what you love as a job so it's kind of like people are like oh uh so how do you relax and you just like oh i just do drawing in my sketchbook <laughs> it's like so what do you do for work oh, i just draw in my sketchbook <laughs> yeah you know what i mean so it's a uh, yeah totally yeah they can can kind of be um can kind of be tricky but i think where i'm getting at with this is i think that sometimes the the um yeah and, and we're getting some comments that are kind of like this where the 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 lack of motivation or the kind of struggle is actually your stru- your personal struggle with taste and your personal struggle with building a visual library. I think they're the things that take the most like mental strain, you know, um, because yep. until you do that, actually drawing is really bloody hard, <laughs> right? Like yep. if you don't know how, you know, um, a, you know fantasy shape language goes or you don't know how to design sci-fi doorways or you don't know how to you know make a yep. you know gremlin or whatever you know whatever whatever you're kind of doing like to build that visual library is really really hard it takes a lot of time and that's kind of the ten thousand hours thing right where it's yeah. like well it's just like yeah. there's the you know like <clears throat> the, the the learning curve is 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 not this sort of gradual learning curve right and i think that's one of those things that um I think it's it's one of the reasons why I think video games does have the ability to really like ruin people, um, because you know I, I feel like typically you're you're sort of dealing with like two scenarios, right? And here's me drawing. This is what you're supposed to be like, Tim. Stop doing that. 
<laughs> Stop doing that. This is not me drawing my my thing. But if you think of, think about like watching TV, right, right, and then like sort of drawing as like a, it's like as as like a dopamine skill acquisition sort of thing. TV kind of goes like this, right? You start watching TV, and then you're like, bang! Immediately, you have like dopamine hit, and it basically kind of, right, just flat lines. Yeah, you are just instantly entertained. You don't have to. You have to do zero. Mm -hmm. It's just bang, flat line, right? Whereas like video games, kind of how often have this like, you know, sort of like cool, you know, and it might go up and down a little bit, right? But it's this nice kind of linear curve of like difficulty and experience and sort of, you know, it gets harder, but you get better at it. You know what I mean? And it's this real thing. Whereas like, you know, um, if you're sort of drawing, right. The, the, the difficulty is, is just like huge, right. You, you kind of often have this like, you know, real kind of ramp up. Right. I mean, if we, if, sorry, if we look at like TV in terms of like effort versus, you know, sort of, entertainment right it's kind of like you know it sort of just jumps up a little bit and then it kind of goes along right whereas video games i think you can get a lot more out of it because you have to give back and stuff whereas yeah and there's sort has, of like a skill involved with the video yeah games, whereas yeah. drawing is is that kind of like real <laughs> kind of you know it's this real kind of like high sort of curve and then you sort of have these like plateaus right <laughs> so i was gonna say don't forget right? the plateau. <laughs> yeah so it's like it's it's a different sort of thing where you know you, you're often spending like you know a lot of time here right or a lot of time here where you're putting a lot of effort in but you're not really getting anywhere and it takes a while to kind of plateau and get to the point where you can actually create stuff that's interesting to you and so if you're sort of stuck there it, it feels like you're not going anywhere Versus like a video game, which has this kind of nice linear curve. And I think we become so accustomed to those things, right? So accustomed to that video game style of improvement um, where it's like, it, it never lets you get bored. <clears throat> um, that it's actually really damaging because people lose the ability to kind of persevere through those um those times like uh, a little bit right which is again that's a little bit pretentious of me to say but that is something i do find right that is you know um it's really hard to get through that kind of like initial sort of level and um and and, it, and it's you know I, I think a lot of that is because people just aren't aren't used to that right we're just not used to spending yeah. that amount of time on something <clears throat> and still sucking <laughs> It's like, but I've spent all this time. I should be good by now, right? Like that's that's what you're sort of used to is this kind of real nice, gradual, friendly sort of, you know, loop. I think also that, yeah, that that those kind of like second and third plateaus are also very, you know, we see this in students all the time where they like uh, people start getting pretty good, like quite good at art, but then it kind of like plateaus off and that can also be really frustrating and it's a it's a real kind of point in time where you have to like really um really try hard not to lie to yourself <laughs> about you yeah. know what you need to improve how to improve uh you know where to kind of go with these things and sometimes they can be hard without some really good like you know mentors and guidance with you know what yeah. to do and things like that so yeah so if any of you guys have any questions about those sort of things we're, we're more than happy to kind of yeah uh, try and answer that stuff so yeah fling us any questions <laughs> that you have so um uh yeah <laughs> so so people are kind of asking uh like or talking about the, the motivation sort of issue well i mean what one, one of the things i'm like one of the things that i'm sort of talking about here is i think if you unless you really practice and unless you really want to do these sort of long you know 15 to 20 hour paintings um, and I think unless you're just someone who naturally is patient enough to do that, uh, don't <laughs> because that's really hard. And, uh, I think especially again, we're, we're, we're probably all likely to have low attention spans, right? Um, try and create stuff the way you can complete it in, you know, a single sitting, right. Or, you know, two sittings or something like that. And try and make sure that your process allows you to stop 
right? So you know, one of the one of the real advantages of a of a line and color process that I think goes sort of underappreciated is that it sort of gives you like a couple of really easy, obvious places to kind of stop. Um, you know, like once I've done the lines, I'm I'm kind of like completed a particular type of thing, right? I'm kind of done with that. Um, yeah, and so. Whereas, you know, like, I, I think a lot of people don't know where to stop, right? Like, where can you sort of pick up? Um, but yeah, I, I, I think like if you're struggling with motivation, um, I think a lot of it is just a matter of building, building better habits with that stuff. And I think a lot of that comes from making sure that, yeah, you, you're not challenging yourself unduly uh, so that you're motivated, right? Like it, you have to sort of design it a little bit like the video game. Like you're in control of that. You're in control of sort of what you're choosing to do. And I think if, if people are sort of having these sort of um, these sort of fantasies of creating like this kind of really big, crazy sort of piece, and you know they're just not there yet in terms of skill. The the real trick is like just don't just like stop trying to do that. And, and I know that sounds like you know annoying or whatever but that generally is the answer like that's what i do right i'm just like uh, and, and i've worked up a lot uh you know and i spent a lot of time trying to build my skill set so that i can basically try and increase the, the scope of what i can do in a set period of time and that that is not just a thing that's like integral to my like you know the way i kind of get better at stuff um, yeah, like I, I don't, I don't try and create too much in, in a set period of time, which we'll see how that'll go with this. And the reason I, <laughs> I'm like, the, I mean, the reason I'm, I'm not too worried because, you know, like generally when I'm doing this sort of thing, I, I don't work on a two hour time frame, and that's kind of how much we've got for this. I'm normally, I really have found that the sweet spot for me is about three hours. That's kind of how much I generally need to kind of create something that is going to, you know, is going to create some sort of interest right it's a good level of interest where i feel like i'm going to be able to improve a little bit does that make sense mm -hmm. yep. so you know if if i try and create stuff like as you would imagine well if i can create something in half an hour right that's better because then i can do more stuff but i just find that the and i think this changes for everyone but for me the sweet spot is about in that sort of three hour time frame because yep. if i try and create something quicker i generally mm -hmm. find i'm not actually creating stuff that I'm interested enough in. It doesn't, I don't get a time to really have enough of a narrative sort of thought. And I don't get to try, I don't get to, you know, spend enough time doing anything sort of illustrative. Right. So typically I'm just not happy with the results. And so do you find that different with like kind of sketching in, in your sketchbook or do you think that's kind of the same kind of no, process when you're just, in your I think it's the same. Stuff, so. I think it's like, if you, if you look at my sketchbook stuff, um, like I, I like doing a bit of sketching, but in general, I just get sick of not creating a scene. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like I want to, I want to create more than just silly, like simple sketches of things. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of, you know, I'll draw in my sketchbook for a little bit, but, but soon I, I kind of get a bit antsy, right? I'm like, ah, oh, I kind of want this to turn into something right to me. And I think that's a big part of that is because I, you know, I, I, I wanted, I always like drawing comics, right? So I like drawing a little scene or something and I want to practice that. And, and I don't really want to practice just sort of, you know, drawing more detailed pictures of figures or whatever. Right. So every now and then I'll get interested in it, but, but eventually I get sick of it and I kind of want to create something with more scope. And um, so a lot of my effort has gone into trying to figure out, well, how do I do that in a set period of time? Right. Like, how do you do that? Like, what, what, what do we do? And do you think that that has changed over the years, Tim? Do you think that when you were sort of starting out more, it was just a matter of like, you were just sketching your sketchbook just to build that sort of visual library of stuff? Yeah, well, I think if, if you look at the... See, I, I think, again, I never had a lot of luck doing the sketching in my sketchbook to learn, right? Like, I think I did it and I think I enjoyed some of it. Um, and I was very quick at doing that, but the results I was getting, like I was never able to really practice doing what I was doing. I was just kind of practicing drawing in my sketchbook. 
And again, a lot of it is what you want to do. I think a lot of people like that kind of, you know, drawing in your sketchbook. And look, you can spend three hours on a sketchbook drawing. You're making like a really rendered version of a face or whatever. But for me, again, what, what I like doing is working from a thumbnail sketch and then building it up. That's what, that's like what I'm about because that's what comics are about. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and I really found that, yeah, the, the only way I really got to improve was that I would kind of, um, I, I started doing the, the sketch blog, right? And this was again in like 2003, right? So from 2003 to like 2007, I ran a sketch blog um, with a bunch of other people. And that was kind of to motivate me and them to create art. Um, and so we had seven people and I tried to keep having like seven people. And there was a huge fuss to kind of run this thing. Right? <laughs> took heaps of, it took too much effort, right? But um, yeah, I'd try and get seven other people, right? And, um, and we'd, so, or six other people. And then we'd all sort of post a theme sort of sketch. Um, each sort of week, right? So the, I'd, I'd have a theme and we'd sort of set it and that week, you know, and so everyone would sort of be working on a piece and they'd sort of have a day that they post it. Um, and yeah, then they could sort of post up on that day. Uh, and that was like a lot of work, right? I had to, I had a domain or maybe I didn't have a domain. It was like subdomain of my thing, like separate WordPress install. It was, I think it was like a different CMS, like a blog CMS before became a WordPress thing, you know, it's like a lot of work and I maintain that, you know, I had like users, I gave people user access and stuff like this, this was before, <laughs> this is before that this stuff was easy. Um, but I, I really enjoyed that. But, you know, for me, I, one of the things that's, that I find with these personal projects is like, I never need a theme to draw. I, I, I don't understand that. I'm always like, if you, if, if I sit down for like five minutes and just sort of think about something, I'll just be like, oh, that sounds like a that, that's a fun thing to draw. I'll just draw that. Um, and I've always been like that. And do you find you start people... to create a bit of a story around your characters and yeah, stuff? Yeah, like, oh, I'm yeah. just thinking of like, yeah. But I've always been like that because I've always wanted to be a, I probably would be a fantasy writer. Mm -hmm. I think that's sort of what I wanted to be. It's like an author more yeah. than a, I just sort of started drawing and I don't know. I literally am like, I, I still don't really know why I became an artist. <laughs> I have no you know, I, I think I wanted to be an author before, like well before that. Yeah, but I, I guess what I'm saying is like what, when I sort of started to, to find some success or what, what, you know, with progressing is when I kind of was doing those, uh, it was called like the daily scribble and I was doing those sort of like um, images and I, and I kind of had about three hours or four hours to create it. And so it would be like a themed piece and, and I, and it was sort of a competition with other people, you know, you'd sort of get into a bit of a competition, like who can create something really cool. Right. And you would sort of look forward to seeing someone else's sort of image based on that idea, you know, each, each day. And sometimes people would spend a lot, but I really found that I, through doing that, I found that the, the pace and the scale that I tended to really enjoy working with. And that has been the same for ever since. Right. It's, it's always been that I like working in that three hour to four hour range. Yep. And I like creating something that's sort of <clears throat> colored. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I, and I, and I want it to be a little sort of world. Um, but when I started, obviously I couldn't create a scene in that time or anything approaching a scene. So, um, uh, I, I'd kind of just do like portraits or little design things, or I'd kind of, you know, I'd, like, you know, have a bit of, I have a page and I'd sort of draw like, you know, there'd be a character maybe riding on. I always like doing that because it's got a bit of action, right? It'd be like a character riding on something. It's the same idea I always do <laughs> just because it's like there's some interaction, but just something like that, you know, something illustrative or something with a character doing something like a bit of a pinup, but it yeah. was sort of more than sketchbook, right? It wasn't just like sketchbook drawings of random things. Um, and I always liked people who were doing that, but I would just never could do it myself um, just because I, I wouldn't have the, the motivation. Right. So does that make sense? Like, it's not that I couldn't do it. It's not like, oh, I'm saying I couldn't do it. I, I just couldn't have the energy to do it as much as I yeah. needed to. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. I found um, I had a little trick. This is back going a long time where um, I can't even remember. Someone definitely showed me this and they were doing it in some other different way. And I was like, that's a great idea because I started noticing when I was, you know, kind of just starting out, like I was doing everything digitally. So this is just as, you know, Wacom tablets and stuff were coming in. Yep. But me and Tim are old. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> there was, it was that kind of thing. And I was like, wow, I'm really doing all of my stuff you know in photoshop or whatever the case may be so my little thing was like i used to do a sketch or a little painting or whatever and then i'd just print it out just in black and white i print it out i'd get a sketchbook and then i'd stick those pages in my sketchbook because yeah. and i'm you've probably seen those tim where i used to make these like massive fat <laughs> sketchbooks because they're like they literally had three times the amount of paper in them because yeah i stuck you know to each side of the, <laughs> of the page but like, because there was sort of a point in time where, like, yeah, I'd, I'd do a similar thing where I'd see, like, say I'd see Tim's sketchbook, other people's sketchbook would be like, oh, man, like, I know I've been doing this stuff, but I've kind of got nothing to show for it. So yeah. I used to just, yeah, I was doing all my drawings in Photoshop, print them out, and then stick them in the sketchbook. And I actually found that was a really good way of kind of, like, being like, oh, actually, I'm doing a whole lot of stuff here. It's just, like, kind of on the computer. Yeah. Um, so Having a record yeah. of it is yeah, super yeah. important. yeah. And I kind of look back that it now look back at those now with kind of like fond memories. It's kind of like, oh man, I should should probably keep doing that, <laughs> keep doing that. But um, uh, yeah. And but I think it's uh, it's kind of also one of those things where you kind of it's. I think it's a similar thought process to like what we're saying about where starting out like kind of keep it, keeping it simple, like yep. the whole thing of like doing a sketchbook and filling it up and seeing that progression is like really does help you kind of like level up in your skills and kind of like yeah i don't know if motivation is the right word but just your desire to kind of want to keep moving forward and doing it and learning and all that kind of stuff yeah well i think it, it's it's very good to to have a sketchbook or i but and again I, I think it's it's less the sketchbook i mean i i go in and out of sort of having a sketchbook Normally, it's sort of I get really into it when it's summer and you can see the pages really well because um, I really hate drawing in a sketchbook when it's dark um, inside because I feel like I just can't see the, you know, I kind of end up sort of <laughs> squinting at the page a little bit, uh, you know, whereas doing digital, you know, when it's dark is like really good because, <laughs> you know, you don't, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Sorry? It's so bright on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it can be like you don't need these crazy and and that seems very you know that seems very weird like most people who hear that are just like you are too fussy but um <laughs> yeah but i just know that i'm fussy i just know that i'm like eh, it's a bit bright in this room like i don't like it if it's too bright you know i don't like having to make the room bright anyway th there's <laughs> uh yeah i i think it's less about sketchbook and i think it's more about like daily practice right or weekly practice right or just dedicating some time to kind of work on something um that's yours yeah right so it's, it's because there's something very relaxing about that i think and i think mostly like i really noticed uh, a big change in my both my ability to be a freelance artist and i think my my effectiveness as a freelance artist when i sort of wrote my first book and i did that because i don't think it was a terribly good book I don't think it was a huge success, but I realized like very, very deeply that this was hard and that I had sort of done it. And so uh, I, I kind of just would sort of stop trying to art direct things that I was on and be like, oh, I don't think that's a good idea. Right. I, it became a lot easier for me to just say, whatever, this is your project. You know, I'm just getting paid to work on it. Uh, you know, whatever you want is, is what I want. Uh, whereas I think before that, I, I was so creatively, like I didn't have the stuff that I was doing myself. And so I was always trying to have a creative outlet through the work I was doing. Yeah. Uh, which sounds weird, but but I think it's like, uh, it's a matter of the type of energy, right? Like that sort of personal energy where like I've got an idea for, for a thing and um, and it's kind of hanging around in my head. And so when someone gives me a project, I try and like project my desires for that week or that month onto the project I'm working on versus like being able to see clearly, like that's what they want. And what I want is what I'm going to do in my time. And I think doing that was like very healthy. Uh, and I think 
managing that time frame was was in, is integral to that, right? So for me, every if I move away from that, which I sometimes do, I mean, I think even recently I was kind of at the point where I sort of was starting to sort of say, oh yeah, I, I really need to do these like big paintings, right? Because I was doing these like big sort of you know scenes and things. Yeah. Um, and and then I'd sort of be keep I keep wanting to like top right that i'd be like oh well i can't do this because that's not as epic as the last thing that i did <laughs> um and i realized that i one of the problems that i and i just sort of wasn't doing a lot of personal work and i think one of the things that i did is i kind of moved outside that hitting range of three hours right to sort of it was in the four to five hour range right that's sort of what i was i was needing that time to really do justice and um i just didn't i don't have that time I just, I don't, I can't make four or five hours of time in a day. Like there's just no way if I'm working that day, that there's no way I can find five hours of spare time to just work on a little personal project. Yeah. That's like the whole day. Yeah. Um, and, but I can find two to two to three. Do you know what I mean? Cause that's really, it's like, you know, that's sort of two lots of, you know, that's sort of two lots of, one hours really like one hour and 15 minutes right i can do that here i can maybe do do you know what i mean it's really possible to do that yep um and and so i found like when i sort of started doing that again and this was this was like last month right this is when i had my um like you know when we're on break from uni i'm always like this is the time for me to do personal things um because i've got more control over my schedule uh yeah and i i sort of made that realization too so i think a lot i guess what i'm saying is like a lot of that fitting that personal project stuff in i think is about the time frame right um and, and managing that uh, certainly for me and, and i would be i mean i would hazard a guess that that is going to be like somewhat of a universal thing but i don't actually know so no i i think so yeah for sure yeah <clears throat> i think if I you think ever like, if you ever stop if you you know, like when you stop kind of doing personal work, that's normally why, because you just run out of time to do it. You know what I mean? Yes. The habit, you run, run out of the habit. Yeah. But the other, yeah. the other thing is that I, I do find that, yeah, doing that's very, I think it's very emotionally healthy to be still doing your own work. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's also, um, I often find like it's a, it's a lot better for me to do it that way because if I spend, you know, even if I just spend the first hour of my day when I'm sort of working, right, when I'm not teaching, um, if I spend that doing a personal piece, right, A, it means I've sort of got some of that out of the way, right, that day. Yep. So I've sort of done that. And it also means that I'm sort of warmed up, right? I've already done, you know, a bit of drawing. So my hand is kind of a little bit more keyed in. And I think that means when I then go to do, you know, and it could be for me, like when I say sort of work, work, right. That's sort of freelance client work. I, I really do equate that to the sort of class work that I imagine a lot of students have, right. It's sort of exercises that are important, right. It's things that are important, but I, I, I'm imagining that none of those are like actually things that you're sitting there imagining that this is what you want to do with your life. You know, they're, they're often abstract exercises, right. Um, so they, I don't think they classify as like personal projects. Right. Um, and I think if you spend time just doing those personal projects, it's a really good way to make sure that when you go to actually do the, the work thing, which is maybe a little bit more challenging, um, then I'm already warmed up, right. I'm kind of already in flow. I've already done some stuff that I kind of like. And thus I, I feel like the end result is better um yeah i feel like uh it's, it's in a good I mean, i'm in a good place so i think from from all right in all ways it is really good to to maintain some sort of personal um project or personal art stuff over time and make sure that you know that that's not just something you do you know when you've got nothing else to do right that it's 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 an, it's an integral part of what you're doing Yeah, no, that's, that's cool. <clears throat> yeah, but anyway, so I'm just I'm just trying to do this and I'm trying to fit this into a particular amount of time, which was sort of in my head. I'm like, I really need this line work to be done. Um, 
before three o'clock. <laughs> just um, you just take, keep going, Tim. I'm just gonna go quickly sort something out. Okay, keep drawing. <laughs> keep drawing. I'm drawing. Um, so yeah, with with this thing, I, I'm gonna try inking it a little bit differently to how I would normally um sort of ink things. I'm gonna try using a bit more of like a an actual black um sort of line style and again I'm, I'm trying to in my head i'm like trying to imagine that i could get this done uh, by the time we're sort of finished so I'm, I'm not able to add you know probably some of the nuance or some of the detail um and i'm trying to sort of lose that in an effort to get to a particular point um, and in terms of finish, right. But for me, again, I, I feel like it's sort of, it, that might be a fun thing to do, but, but really I, I much prefer doing something that's going to take, yeah, more in that kind of three hour range, right. This is sort of, I'm having to make compromises that I, that I don't think are worth it. Right. For me, I'm like, well, I would rather spend more time, uh, on these right? I'd rather spend more time on this and have a, a more finished result. Got a bit of a question, Tim. Yep. Um, so if you have a story and idea, how do you talk about it with enthusiasm? I find when trying to describe the world of a drawing I did or the story that I have for a character, I get really embarrassed about it. Right. I don't know. <clears throat> I think it's also like, I think when you are starting this stuff out, you're a bit kind of, it is nervous <laughs> that like people aren't going to like your ideas and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think it's just practice as well. You know, it's just that whole sort of practice thing of talking about your ideas and drawing cool stuff. And yeah, yep. you'll soon get a vibe whether people kind of like it or not like it as well. <laughs> well, also, I think like, I mean, one of the questions is like, why do you need to do that? Well, I think if I, th I think if um, uh, the person in question is just yeah, yeah, is just like you know trying to explain it to a teacher or whatever, yeah. um, or to another artist or who, whoever the case may be. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No. Fair enough. Yeah. Oh, I certainly remember times where I've been in classes where, like, when I was a student and being like, "Oh, here's my idea," and I'm like, oh, "I don't know if this is a good idea." <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. There's, a, there's probably no real way around that specifically, just in terms of, um, yeah. yeah, you just got to keep, you know, keep working on it, refining it, and I think. Well, I mean, I think also just coming up with a simple way to explain it, like if you're not a talker, right? Um. And I would say, like, I, I don't like talking about that stuff. Like, what's this thing? I'm like, well, it's a picture, right? Can't you tell what it is? Um, <laughs> you know, like, I obviously haven't done a very good job if I have to tell you what it is about. Um, is just see if you can sort of sum it up in a sentence, right? Like, this is what it is. Uh, and see if you can write that down. I was so going to say, you, like, write that stuff down. And, yeah. Yeah. If you're sort of, because often one of the things is when you've got an idea, it's kind of a visual idea and you try and explain it and you're like, oh, that doesn't sound as good as it is in my head. Um, yeah. Don't write it. Don't say it then. <laughs> try and see if there's a way you can write it down and, and make it kind of, you know, interesting. Or Yeah. Right. That's where I think like when you kind of like, uh, even when I'm doing sort of like design fundamentals -y stuff, you know, like kind of coming up with the logo and coming up with the, 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 you know, corporation that's building these props and having those little, you can sort of have those, you can build those story components in visually, if that makes sense. And then there's less talking you have to do about it. <laughs> yeah. So even when you're doing character, you could even have, have some written components of like, you know, the, what he's doing or what tools he has or is he a miner yeah. or, a, you know, like, yeah. And then you'll find that, like, people will ask you that question less because they'll just be like, oh, yeah. Because the whole point of that is that eventually your image should just explain that by itself, right? That's the whole point of kind of thinking about the story stuff in your head. Yeah. <clears throat> so that you kind of know what to draw and how to draw it and stuff, right? So after a while, you tend to, like, I think you find that people don't really ask that question anymore. <laughs> yeah. They're just like, oh, yeah, this is cool. And it's only when you're in like some pitch meeting where you're pitching an animated show or something where someone's going to be asking that kind of stuff. But in in terms yeah. of, you know, when you're just 
doing kind of artwork and but also like you know they're often just asking you those things like yeah it's most of the time it's like we're in a visual industry right that's that's often what's happening right we're in a visual industry so you shouldn't really be saying anything <laughs> um you should just show it so yeah I, I think in the university environment people probably want you more to say things right and write them down whereas i think in a lot of jobs it's kind of like you you need to be able to understand what's being said but in terms of like what you do most of the time it's like someone tells you what to do and then you do it <laughs> so they're like blah 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 and you're just kind of like okay and then you go and draw something and then you're like, here it is. And then they can kind of tell you whether that's right or not. It's, it's very rare that you're going to have to sort of explain it because they know what you sort of create. So I think it's like, it's probably like a temporary problem. And um, yeah, I just sort of write it down so that you have a, you know, you remember what, what you're doing um, from a, yeah, like not, not from a sort of, you know, visual standpoint and just realize that a lot of a reason that we get employed as concept artists is because pictures are often better than words at explaining a lot of these visual concepts. So, you know, it, there's no point in writing about like, well, this is the mood that I'm trying to evoke or whatever. It's like the paint, that's what the painting is for. And the words are there for just sort of describe things that words are good for, you know? So you could say, you know, this is a dystopian futuristic, you know, like world where, you know, this and this and this and this has happened. Right. And that's it. I mean, the painting should describe the rest. The painting should describe the mood. So just make sure, yeah, that you know you, you you're putting that energy where where it sort of needs to go. And I think I think from like a teacher point of view, a lot of times we kind of talk about that stuff because uh, we want you to be thinking about it in your head while you're kind of designing and drawing. So sometimes I think there's a lot of times where people aren't thinking about that stuff and then it shows in their work. Yeah. So that's probably why you're sort of thinking about like, oh, I've always got to have this stuff. It's not necessarily that, you, you know, someone's just, you know, <clears throat> someone from Pixar is going to hold you up in an elevator and say, give me your elevator pitch right now, <laughs> yeah. you know, but it's more just the fact that when whenever you're doing this stuff, just thinking about that internally. So sometimes sort of writing that down and getting asked questions about that in class is more just because like an instructor might see that you're not doing that. Does that sort of make sense to people? Yeah. Um, or yeah. that if they're going to give you feedback, it's important to know, right? Like, cause <clears throat> again, you'd be surprised. The only reason I ever ask that stuff is because you'd be surprised how often I'll sort of give feedback and, you know, then people will say, oh no, I, you know, I wanted it to look like this whole other thing. And I'm like, oh, well, everything I just said was a complete waste of time then, you know, because I was telling, you know, and this is why the influence map and all those sorts of things are really key. Yeah. It's very common that, you know, people, if, if I don't know where you want to go with something, I can't actually give you any sort of meaningful critique at all. Um, because I'm just going to tell you to do something that is not actually based on, you know, the, the brief you've got so that's why i think it's often really important to do you know what i mean to to, to understand that brief yeah. um and and for the for the artist for the art director to understand it because often again like you know there's there is an element of you guys creating your own brief yep yeah um so do you did you did you start doing sort of speed paintings and things like that like how did that because i feel like that's a really interesting sort of element to this and i think people got really excited about the idea of speed paintings as a way especially for people who are not drawers right people who don't work in sketchbooks um as a way to kind of say hey but i can kind of create sketches you know uh, i can work fast yeah if you are someone who's an illustrator right your whole job is like well you're going to spend a week or a month on one image and that's sort of the the antithesis of what we're discussing yeah yeah i think it's um i think it's interesting like i guess that it there's definitely like a thing where sometimes you're like oh i'm not a real artist because i'm not i don't have a sketchbook <laughs> i'm not sure sketching in my sketchbook all the time you know what i mean yeah. like that that's definitely a thing that can be a uh yeah well like a kind of downer i suppose on on yeah. what you're doing so yeah i think 
I think the whole kind of like, yeah, well, speed painting, you know, I don't, I don't know whether that's really a great term either. <laughs> I don't know. It's more just like sketching in, but doing it painterly. <laughs> yeah, doing you know it in mean? Photoshop. Yeah. yeah, yeah, doing it in yeah. Photoshop. So I guess that was kind of around the same time where I was like, hey, I should just like print these things out and stick them in a sketchbook, you know? Yeah. I guess like you could do sort of things like you've done, Tim, where you have a blog, you know, or a or some sort of like, I mean, blogs are kind of outdated now, right? But just oh, yeah. some this sort of all- like completely antiquated yeah literally well, like <clears throat> horse and cart <laughs> kind of well i think like even art station has like a blog functionality thing to it right yeah, where yeah. you can kind of yeah almost oh, there's like very a similar things kind of you know yeah yeah it's you, just i that. mean the, the thing is just you have to put zero effort into having a blog now whereas yeah. before it used to it the, like the the inertia was such that kind of if you didn't make something of it it was kind of wasn't worth your time right mm. like if you weren't like i've got a blog and i'm going to figure out what to post to it you know yeah Versus now it's like, oh, you can write a blog post if you want. And some people on ArtStation seem to, right, every now and then, you know, do one. But it's not like they're blogging, you know. Um, yeah, but I think the idea is the same, right? It, it, I don't think that changes. It's just the idea of regularly posting something. I yeah. Mean, I think that's what yeah. ArtStation is. Mm. Yep. Yeah, it's all the same. I mean, it's the same sort of process. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, so I think that's like, you know, doing sort of speed painting, just doing quick paintings. I think that's really good. I remember there was a really distinct point in time where I, um, you know, got a, got my first job at a video game company and I was, you know, like went from freelancing to working in-house and like that was a really, um, <laughs> it was a really full-on experience for me. Yep. And I was like, I really don't want to get fired from this job. And I was kind of getting asked to do a lot of things that weren't necessarily in my visual library. So sure. I just had to like kind of whole ass and like build that visual library as as quickly as I could. So my thing that I used to do was every, I I was actually really like, this is kind of around the time I met uh, Peter Young as well. Like we used to, not just with Pete, but with other people, we'd, we'd go out for lunch every day and we would go you know across the road next door there was like lots of really great eating places near where where it kind of worked and so we would go and get food and after a while it's like because this is kind of back when i was playing a fair bit of sport as well i was playing a lot of basketball and i was like man i'm really getting fat doing <laughs> this every day because every day it was like a big you know pasta or, you know like it was sort of like going out for a proper meal you know yep. every lunch and like I, an eating competition basically yeah, kind of yeah and um, I, I, I was just kind of, I kind of went, hey, you know what, I'm, this is not, this is not great, and I need to just kind not of, who I am, yeah, and I need to just get better at my art and stuff. So, one thing I did was I just, I started bringing my lunch from home. I would eat it as quickly as I could, and we had an hour lunch break, and I'd spend the next like fifty minutes just doing a painting. And I did that every day. And I, I remember, I don't even know where I saved them anymore, but I, I remember I did like about 300 of them. So just like every day, I just did a did a painting, like a study or whatever, whatever it was. But it, and I really found that really helped me build up that kind of like visual library and just get better at painting and more comfortable. Yep. And then you're kind of working and doing stuff. And it just, yeah, it's just a matter of that, like <clears throat> putting the time in, the mileage, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And then, you know, what a surprise. After a while, I felt more comfortable with things. I could paint more stuff. You know, when, when they were asking me at work to do something, be like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Like, you know, I can do this and just get better and better and better. So, yeah, I think you do these yeah. things and you start to go like, oh, yeah, you know, like that actually does kind of work, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's just that. And it's a similar thing with kind of the sketchbooks and that. So I think that, yeah, kind of doing those sort of yeah and and i think at the start i i found that yeah i started out i was just kind of like copying photos and stuff so i'll just be like okay let's just learn how to paint let's just replicate this thing right and then yeah, kind I was of quickly ask, what, what were you actually doing yeah well, at the start it was just like kind of studies because it was just like oh, you know shit how do i paint a tree because i you know i guess i went from kind of doing like a lot of line work where i'd color it up in in uh you know in photoshop but have a line but then i was kind of getting asked to do more like kind of painting stuff so i was like oh shit (laughs) how do i do this so i was like okay let's just learn how to paint um so you know i was just kind of copying not not copying paintings but just you know like reference and just doing a study of a mountainside or whatever the case may be right right 
And so from photos? Yeah, just from photos. But then yeah. after a while, like I did find that I would start, no, uh, it doesn't take very long to kind of get sick of that <laughs> and just be like, okay, now I want to do something of my own. And yeah. yeah, and then you start to like, all of a sudden you start to go, like, oh, hang on a minute, I'm actually like painting my own stuff up that you're just using all that kind of visual library for like, how do I paint a rock? Okay, well, let's practice 10 times, you know, painting an actual rock. Yeah. And then... And then you can just paint your own now rocks. I can paint my own rocks. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's just, yeah, it, it's always all about just practice, right? Like it's. it's yeah. Well, you know. no, I mean, I think that's, I mean, and that's the scary thing, right? Is it's always just about practice. But <clears throat> the question is, how do you, how do you find the practice that's right for you? Yeah. Um, and make it fun. Right. Cause I mean, I've heard again, like in, in a similar way, like I sort of say, I, I, you know, Craig Mullins, said ages ago and i distinctly remember sort of like if you want to get good at rendering and stuff just do cubes and i didn't do it um you know people are always like uh because i always i think one of the things is i wanted to create scenes that were like the speed painting scenes because to me that seemed more interesting than sort of doing in a sketchbook so i could do a sketchbook but i was like but i like the fact that these people who are doing speed paintings are kind of making a whole world in a scene and I really like that. But for the life of me, I've never been able to enjoy or do any good job at doing a speed painting. <laughs> like any sort of painting thing and anything at all that I do in like an hour or less, like I just, I'm never happy with the result. And any time I've tried to do speed painting, I've just, I like... I don't know. I've never been able to do good enough at it. I, I just think I just think lots of those guys were using lots of tricks and tools and things that like kind of. It, it's not really like yeah yeah. It took an hour, but like they used four hundred custom shapes to help build the yeah you yeah know, totally. like it's sort of yeah. It, I think in that situation, like it's not very often you just see someone just sit down and go boom, scribble scribble scribble, and like half an hour, it's all like kind of done. You know, just yes. from like it just paint application kind of thing you know what i mean totally um you have to use a lot of like shortcuts and photos and you know like yeah i can do something in an hour or whatever right but yeah. but like you tend to <laughs> use a whole bunch of little shortcutty yeah, yeah. things whereas when you just like sit there and just paint something or just draw something or whatever the case may be it just takes longer because you've just you know you have to build it all up right yeah totally um, <clears throat> Yeah, so we've got a few other. We've got another question specifically for you, for you, Tim. Um, uh, uh, the question is like, I was also thinking, Tim wrote a whole book, which I think would be really personal sort of self-expression. And every time I make up a story, I'm just like, ah, that's stupid. Was wondering if Tim had that voice in his head when planning his story or making the story, and how you got mm. over that if you did. Well. I, I think that's you, you're talking about editing versus creating, right? It's like you've got a voice that's sort of second guessing what you're doing. Um, and I think again, a lot of that is is having the process down so that what you're thinking about um, has a chance to get out there. Uh, but for me, again, like yeah, I, I sort of had that a lot, right? And I would write a lot of things, and I would sort of, you know, it's sort of you sort of it's very hard to it's very hard to 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 know whether you don't like the the stuff you're doing because it's actually not very good or whether you're just sort of sick of it right there's a certain degree to where if if you want to do that creative stuff you you have to um as alan moore says treat it like a god right so you you have to you have to understand that this thing that you're doing is more powerful than you and your sort of feelings and that the process of creation is more important than your feelings and that whoever told you that you'd be able to tell whether your idea is good or not like who was that who, who told you that <laughs> um because they're not a creator you know what i mean might like have been that, you might have been you in a class, Tim. He was <laughs> crushing dreams. Well, to say, like, you, you, you would be able to have, like, oh, here's an idea for a thing. <clears throat> Let me think about that. No, nah, no, nah, actually, it's not very good. I think the only people who are good enough to do that are people who have been working and have done that, like, a thousand times. You know, they're able to sort of have, like, maybe a few ideas. But 
what what I'd say is I'd say and until you actually have some conception of like what like how, how would you judge it you know what I mean like how do you judge an idea yeah well, I actually think that I actually think that like all ideas are good in yep. <clears throat> in some shape or form but it's actually the execution that makes the idea you know kind of come to life or not come to life right so yeah, sure we, we recently had like a kind of pitch meeting internally at cdw and um kind of the pitches that everyone came up with i was just like i was like okay so we had like a team meeting we're like what are we gonna work on uh next right and um and so so all the guys pitched some ideas i'm like all of these ideas are great like we could do all of these things yep. uh, and, and everyone was like yeah like we don't like the idea is the easy part <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. the actual like you know building it and then sticking with it and like nurturing it and t and taking it to the next level like that's the yeah. hard bit right um that's and, the bit and that having, and having the passion to do that right yeah so i mean yeah. i i think you can assess whether or not an idea um is something you're interested in and i think you can assess whether or not you potentially think that it has some marketing capability Right, I think some ideas are a little bit easier to market than others. Um, but the real key there is like, are you going to have the energy to see it through? Right, like that's the real integral thing. And so I think it's less about, you know, like you could come up with 10 ideas, they would all be sort of functional. But then the question is like, which one do you like best? Because that's important. It's not, that's not a minor point. <laughs> You know that's that's the whole point is like which one do you guys want to do um and yeah so i, I think it's like yeah that, that that i think that is very much true right that, that it is the execution of the idea but let's assume it's not right let's assume some ideas are better than other ideas just for sake right for, for argument's <clears throat> sake because i think you know you, you could also play that game yes right <laughs> um some ideas are better than others yeah and and that could be marginally so or you know sometimes you know when you when you sort of like i think um like stranger things for example is an idea that is very much reliant on the execution yeah um you know like it's not actually a strong idea you know but but a lot of those you know a lot of movies are about the idea like you know there's like some of those ideas about you know like oh there's like a monster or something like the, what, are, what are those ones where you know it's about you can't make a sound or you can't see anything right what is that like a like a horror movie like those horror movies that came out there was a couple where like everyone had to be blindfolded i never watched them but i know what the movie was about <laughs> right because it's a high level concept i can tell you and you're like oh yeah okay i get i get what's going on there you know that that's an interesting high level concept um and i think uh, some ideas <clears throat> are better than others in terms of that right the elevator pitch is very solid um at, at a high level idea but that's not all ideas right a lot of things that people enjoy are just there because you know that like what's what's the high level pitch for game of thrones right Th there isn't there's no high level pitch for game of thrones it's just like a well done fantasy world and you probably couldn't if you tr just try and explain to someone like why game of thrones <laughs> is good right and that's yeah. a good example is like the other thing I'd say is take for the person who's asking, like, how do I figure out whether the idea is good? Again, assuming you could tell, um, how would you be able to, if you had to say to someone else, there's this cool show called Game of Thrones, right? Or a cool show like Stranger Things. And they're like, oh, cool. What's it about? I'm like, I bet you, you would just fall flat on your face trying to convince <laughs> anyone why it's cool. <laughs> Be like, oh, well, it's kind of like there's this, there's this throne and there's this king and, and then this guy does this thing and, you know, like, oh, but it, it's really cool. Trust me, you know, like that's how most of those conversations go. So don't expect your explanation of your idea to be any better than that. <clears throat> um, because a lot of that is, do you have a skill for pitching? Do you have a skill for storytelling? Can you make it interesting? Right. And, and people who have a skill for storytelling can kind of make anything interesting. Right. They just they just understand inherently three act structure. 
their, their converse their sentences have punchlines. you know what i mean their timing is good yeah so that's that's a skill in and of itself right but it's and it's not necessarily a skill that people have different writers have different types of stories they tell and some are very punchy right and some are like longer and, and more nuanced and assuming that you could tell whether the idea was good how would you know at what point you could tell it's good is it from the first idea is it like once you put some work into it you know like how, how would you know so that's the sort of thing i'd, I'd think about right it's like how, how do you know whether it's good or bad what, what are you using as a as a basis for that i think it's oh, more anyway. just i think it's more just people compare themselves against other things right okay like oh, yeah. this isn't good as that yeah but again like why i think well i think this is where you can study those things a little bit more like think about it a bit more um because if you're sort of thinking about like my sort of if you're thinking about like how i did it um like yeah i i had no idea but i i i had a slightly different problem which is like my problem was to convince an editor that my thing was good right so so and I think that's that sort of solved a lot of those problems um, because I, I sort of knew like, oh, I've, I've kind of got to convince someone that this is good. So I didn't really have to sort of say, you know, like, oh, am I worried about this? I was kind of already thinking, I had to think a little bit more commercially with that. Like, how would I sort of convince the publisher to publish it, right? And so immediately I have to think a little bit more commercially about it, I guess. So we're getting into a slightly different topic, but do you think that that kind of, uh, how much do you think that relies on like trust? So I feel like most people who have something that, you know, they, they do a comic or they do a graphic novel that becomes a TV show or they do blah, 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 whatever it is, right? Whatever project ends up kind of being successful. Mm -hmm. I feel like most people have built up a relationship with someone that helps them on that like kind of journey. And I guess in your case, Tim, like, You've been working with that editor for a little while, yeah. Um, and so you kind of, I guess, build up a level of trust, right? Where you, but, but sort he of... still had to pitch it to his yeah. editor, yeah. And that's where it would fail, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and it did fail. <laughs> like we, we pitched it to the the main guy, and he said, "No, nah, I don't want." It. So then we had to like pitch it to to some other places, and and so <laughs> that's a lot of faith, right? Like to a certain degree, you have to have faith in the product before you pitch it to someone. And if you don't have faith, it's going to be very hard to convince someone else to have faith in it, right? And and I think a lot of that is just a matter of sort of, you know, blind faith. That that is often why, you know, you you're going to be better at doing this if you are sort of a bit younger, right? A lot of it is just blind faith, like that. That is terrifying. Like, don't expect that not to be terrifying, right? You, you've got an idea for this thing. You've got to sort of pitch it and put it all out there. You know, how do you not feel terrified about that? I'm like no <laughs> there's no way not to be there's there. no that doesn't you're imagining something that doesn't happen everyone's terrified right everyone worries about that i think right and you know you're, you're always going to be worried about it like that's again like you know i i what like we always sort of say all the artists who sort of you know all, probably all the writers who kind of you know sit there and like write something and we're like yep well the end done it that's the best book that's ever been written <laughs> you know no, they're there's probably no, all no like, such this thing is a heap of junk <laughs> no one's they're gonna no, read <laughs> no one yeah like you they they're not being critical <clears throat> and they're probably writing crap right like that that sort of person is not a writer i mean go read go read the books written by writers it's just all self it's all angst and self-exploration and you know people figuring these things out and going very deep right because that's the question it's like well you can create anything you want how would you tell whether the thing you're going to create is good or not? exactly you know <laughs> exactly that's exactly it how does anyone tell whether anything's good how did steve jobs know the iphone was going to be good <laughs> do you know what i mean he had to sell it he had to create it you know like how do, how does any of this stuff work it's terrifying once you actually look at it um and i think it should be terrifying yeah 
So um, with this uh, piece you're doing at the moment, Tim, are you sort of, is it going to be a black and white thing or are you, or are you just sort of adding in value to um, I'm, color? I'm, try, or? I'm going to try and add color, but yep. I'm going to have to do it real quick if I do. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is, yeah, I'm going to try and add a bit more tone, which I don't normally do, and uh, see if that helps cool. in some way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of those, like if you're sort of thinking about coming up with your own project, I mean, I spend a lot of time reading about writing because I'm not, I'm not naturally very good at that. And I've, I've probably, again, I've probably gotten to a point where I'm, I'm way, way better at drawing than I am at writing or making stories. Right. I'm really an amateur. Um, and the book that I did didn't do terribly well, right? So it's not like I'm like, well, and look at that, that worked out. I'm like, well, <laughs> that didn't work out very well. It was not, you know, I wasn't immediately some crazy success. And so I had to sort of regroup and figure out, okay, how how does that work, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, but the, the reality is, you know, that, and this is what, if you if you read about people who want to be writers, or people who are creators, you know, most writers don't become successful until they're in their forties, right? Like most writers, professional writers, the ones you know of, the yep. ones that you read their books, yep. right? The the Stephen Kings, all of them, didn't become remotely financially successful or able to support themselves in any way, any way at all. They were all working second jobs, or they had partners who work for work full time and were supporting them until they're in their forties or late thirties. Cause that's how long it took them to actually figure out how to write a story that, you know, worked, you know, and a lot of it is like, you know, a lot of people would be sort of, you know, saying like, Oh, they wrote a story, but you know, yeah. Like maybe the, 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 the title of it was wrong or, you know, like it just, it wasn't getting the marketing presence. Right. It's, there's so many things that sort of go into that that it's quite it's quite difficult to, to really tell and now obviously everyone's like oh but he wrote this in 1984 or you know he wrote this you know in the 70s or whatever yeah. but it's like yeah but he didn't make any money from it <clears throat> didn't know who that person was right um they were just a struggling artist and uh yeah that didn't that didn't work right that was not financially successful for them and they were you know working in a service station or something while they were doing that, writing that book. And now it's been republished, but you know, when it was published, it was kind of, you know, no one knew it came out. It didn't sell anything. And, um, you know, then the editor was like, maybe you should give this up. <laughs> and they just didn't. <laughs> right. And everyone who gave up and saw, oh, well, maybe my, my ideas aren't any good. They just, they never became writers because I think those writers need to write. That's a thing that they're not writing because, you know, they're not creating things because, they're, they're, you know, hoping to become successful, right? They're, they're sort of hoping to become successful so that they can keep writing full time. But a lot of those people, I think, who make it as, as writers are writing because they're compelled to, right? And I think that's the same thing with sort of artists, right? It's like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to get good at art so that I can become employed. I'm trying to get employed so that I can keep drawing art. <laughs> so they don't have to do a different job <laughs> like that's because again you have to sort of think about that stuff right like i mean i guess i do and oh yeah, yeah i think and, everybody does to uh you know to different degrees but yeah i mean that, that's yeah. generally the I, i'm sure there's other people motivation. Who are different but yeah like why why do anything you know why <laughs> yeah all right i'm done i'm done i'm done adding stuff to here I'm sure everyone sort of had uh, had a bit of a kind of like a point in their life as well where they're kind of like uh okay so you're not making enough money doing this art thing uh what are you gonna do next <laughs> and I think it's the ones that are stubborn enough <laughs> to yeah. keep, keep kind of pushing where they're like oh yep yeah, I just now I've got a job doing this thing I can keep doing some art for a little bit longer and it's basically just yeah. like a game like that right where it's Got to keep getting better so I can keep getting a job so I don't get told I've got to do something else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 So I think it's like coming at it from a slightly different degree, right? Like <clears throat> I think uh, assuming that you would be able to tell whether your idea is good or, you know, like that, that you, you should have a reasonable expectation of that is, is maybe 
um, is maybe misguided, right? I think it's like, so I think, and I think a lot of what that comes down to is that the, the answer to these things is frequently that you, you need to be doing this because you want to. And normally I think that is one of those things that it takes right. Like, you know, if you hear people talk about these things, that's one of the things they talk about, you know, is like, oh, finally I figured out I've got to write for myself, you know, <laughs> and stop trying to become successful at it or, you know, please other people. And then they sort of created the work that you sort of know. Um, and I think there's like something really important to that. Uh, but if you go and, you know, read like there's um, who wears some good, I think like a, like Tim Ferriss has a good interview with Neil Gaiman. Um, for instance, you know, there's some really good interviews with Alan Moore. Go and listen to what those people say. And, you know, it's kind of like very much along the lines of sort of, you know, if you like the, the Mobius art, you know, go and listen to Mobius's, you know, top 15 tips of how to be an artist. And, you know, very, very little of it has to do with what pencil you use or, you know, um, I think, <laughs> if, if you if you see the the links that that artists and writers and creators and people who are actually kind of creating stuff from scratch and the focus and the attention and the the, the mental preparation that that requires to do that is not it's not like you're sitting there playing video games all day right and then being like oh I'm just going to get up and you know <laughs> write my book or whatever I mean if you if you listen to that sort of interview and you sort of see the sort of things that Neil Gaiman's talking about it's like he's like when I'm writing a book he has these rules and these things that he's doing. And, and one of them is like, he wants his day to go exactly the same every day, like exactly the same, like not just a little bit, but like he doesn't do other stuff while he's writing a book. Like he, I think it's like, even to the point it's like, you, you don't do shopping, right? It's like, he, you know, people like that's the pleasure, right? It's like, Oh, you can get other people to do stuff for you. So you can just write, but like the focus of sort of maintaining you, the presence in that world and not being distracted by stuff and engineering your life so that that is the case is like non-trivial and people do all sorts of things, right. To kind of make that work for them, I guess. Um, and so, yeah, if you're just sort of assuming like, Oh, I'll just be able to kind of, you know, <laughs> like why, why are you telling anyone about your story? Because a lot of people don't, they won't discuss the story. They won't discuss the book. They won't discuss the thing until it's finished. You know, uh, that's something that I find like very, very common in people who are like auteurs or people who are creating sort of work is like, you know, they won't, they won't show it to me. They, 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 they're not interested, right? Because you need to maintain that sort of focus, right? Um, and, and I think that's like super important. Yeah. So think about some of those things, right? Like actually, um, yeah, like look, look at people who are actually creating things and, um, you know, see what they say. Like how do they sort of handle that stuff? Because, um, yeah, I was sort of surprised the degree to which those people are. I mean, listen to some of the things Alan Moore does, right? Where it's to, to get the story going. It's like, yeah, it's not all. Basically, a lot of it involves psychedelics. <laughs> so, sounds like alan moore yeah yeah <laughs> you know and sort of not knowing where it's going to go and not like i mean worrying about whether it's going to be good is like i don't think that's of a concern but part of that might also be that like he's had a level of success so then with that comes confidence that yeah. things are going to be okay and well received you know what i mean Maybe. and then you could probably have take more risks as well because you kind of go like, yeah. oh, this is, you know, people like what I'm doing. This is okay. Whereas yeah. maybe like kind of really starting out, you're just like super nervous about how it's yeah. going to be kind of received. Well, I mean, I think he, I think I remember <clears throat> him saying, and I forget whether this is the case, but um, like, I think he sort of had to go all in with creating. And I think it was like, he said like when his, I think it's like one of his, either his child was born or one of his first children was like about to be born and he kind of realized like if i don't do this right now if i don't like quit and go all in becoming a writer it's not going to happen um and so a lot of the time it does require like a, a, a very dramatic uh sort of effort on the right of the creator or on the um part of the creator <clears throat> to get this happening right um 
Yep. Yeah. And I think also like if you look at, you know, people often people in Hollywood are really into like, you know, the struggle, right? You know, like overcoming adversity and, you know, it's because it's so hard to get a movie made. That's their life. Like every director is probably put up with more adversity than the vast majority of the characters that are in their movies. Yeah. You know, and more like mayhem and drama and like, oh, you almost got there and like, oh, now no, your movie's canceled or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's so hard to do those things that, you know, that is the story, right? That is like a huge part of that narrative. Um, and, you know, people with boring lives probably most of the time write pretty boring stories, right? <clears throat> so, yeah, worrying about that is, is fine. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's hard to, hard to know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think some people have got very good imaginations too so they might, they might maybe yeah not, it's not like they have to have some crazy existential stuff going on in their life but maybe they're just good at <laughs> making that stuff up could be <clears throat> yeah I, I i don't know if i i mean i haven't read many of those where i like the art and i but i think that could be because a lot of the writers and the art that i'm attracted to is of that sort of ilk right um, so that could be a major, a major sort of confirmation. Yeah, we've also got like a bit of a statement um, here where um, a person says uh, Finney, Finney and McManus' story of going all in was so interesting on, uh, yeah, in kind of doing art. Oh, yeah. I think I think everybody has to do that at some point. It, it's kind of like because I'm, I'm not sure everyone quite gets the scope of like, you know, being a professional artist is like, is being a professional artist <laughs> you know like at, if you are going to do it and be successful at it it you have to go all in <laughs> yeah, yeah you know it has to be what you do um yep. yeah so I, I think everybody would have that story what, what of, was his story Did you... um i think just like he he ended up you know going uh going to la and getting into art center and you know all of that kind of stuff yeah um right right uh yeah and and kind of yeah i mean you just yeah, you have to. Um, I'm pretty sure Finn went to Art Center. I'm, I'm like, like ninety eight percent sure. Um, we can we can ask him. I've actually got a, a, during this stream, Tim, that's been going on. I've kind of, uh, I'm sure we can get some of uh, your guys' uh, feedback. Is um, is that uh, I've been thinking. So we're going to try and do this stream every second week with Tim. And what I was thinking of doing in the alternate weeks is is actually uh, getting in some guest artists. Um, and perhaps even in the session with with uh, 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 Tim and myself as well, and and kind of talking to people and getting them to do different demos and things like that. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, Finn was one I had on my list, <laughs> so yep. perhaps we can ask him that question. Um, yes. <clears throat> yeah, uh, but um, uh, I think especially like when people get into kind of uh, specifically art center in LA, like. I mean, if you get into that school, you are just up for a lot of money. You you have to go all in because if you don't, I don't know, what else are you going to do? Get a part-time job somewhere else and try and pay back, you know, $300,000, $400,000 student loan. It's like yeah. you need to get real good at art <laughs> so you yep. can have a successful job so you can pay back your loans. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Whereas in Australia, it works a little bit different. And I think that's probably why we... Uh, why we're only really uh, uh, I, th I think we're we're new to really taking art seriously you know it's uh, it, it's not uh, the, the common thing to do you know you, you'll, you'll speak to a lot of parents a lot of art teachers in high school a lot of you know where say, say they're a little bit older than myself and Tim and it is a bit of like a, it's a it's a hobby it's a it's a little pastime that you can do to you know, maybe sell some postcards in a shop when you're 65, you know, for yeah, retirement, yeah, yeah. retirement or whatever. Like, Whereas I think we're sort of like with CW Studios and all the things that, that we're doing, we're kind of really trying to change that like kind of stigma with, uh, with how much effort, you know, we kind of want people to put in. Because yeah. you can see now, because of the internet and globalization things, we, we know how much other people are working and stuff to, to do this. And Tim and myself, we, we, you know, we, we're both the same way. We're just like, this is like a medicine degree. You know, it's like a law degree. You literally have to be that good and you have to commit that much time to it to like become a professional. Otherwise, 
it's just not gonna work out <laughs> you know yeah because you're just gonna hard. compete against yeah. other people who are who are you know, way and, better. and i think that's that's why like I, I think that's why it is so important to figure these things out like um you know like you're saying simon like you know if you can't figure out like yeah a way to kind of be doing it's like you've got a job you're living a dream and if you can't figure out a way to kind of be that person who's doing those speed paintings at lunchtime then you know someone else is going to be doing it and then you know like when, when people are on the chopping block or you know like who gets you know hired again or you know like you you're fight you're always competing against people who are doing that sort of stuff you know and who are that sort of excited about it um and are that sort of enthusiastic about it and i i think it's i think a lot of that stuff like the momentum stuff is like it's either on or off right i think that's so important is like um and that's what a lot of you know self-help sort of stuff talks about is you you kind of either growing or you're dying right (laughs) um that's like so integral to, to to humans is like you know we 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 often actually operate really well when you know, like it's lots of stuff is happening um, and human beings are quite good at that. And if sort of nothing's happening, people tend to kind of get a little bit sort of depressed. You know what I mean? Um, so I think it is it is really important to, to get that right, to get that balance right. You know what I mean? For yourself. Um, yeah, but that that's that's why it's just it's so hard to, to compete, um, you know, uh, in, in one of those industries because and, and that's why it's important to figure out what you want to do and you know practice and you know figure out you know exactly what you want to be doing and make sure you're doing your personal work so that you know you can improve and enjoy doing it you know because if, if you're sitting there going like oh, i'm so sick of like doing studies or you know you can't figure out a way to kind of you know improve your art outside of the job um then, you know, if someone else does figure that out, then they're kind of getting better for free and they're enjoying doing it, you know, which is really hard to compete against. Um, Yeah. And and I think like, you know, most of the people who seem to, you know, really enjoy the, the, they, they, you know, they, they figure out how to solve that problem basically, you know, for better or worse. How to solve the problem of kind of like learning for fun almost, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, like, yeah. Yeah. Well, learning for free, right? It's yeah. like like without it feeling like, oh, you know, and yeah. figuring out a way to, to 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 progress and and you know like play that game, yeah. But but enjoy doing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think the times when I've found it like, oh, it's just when I like know that there's something that is a weakness, and I'm like far out. Like, why have I taken this long to like address that? You know what I mean? Yeah. And. I think that's when you have those moments of kind of like, oh my God, this is like really hard, really difficult. But I think if you can identify that stuff and just, yeah, like build upon it and then move on and learn that stuff, like, yeah, you're great. I mean, like I'll have, there's heaps of moments. Like, for example, like say, for example, I get a client that says like, I need to design this type of gun or whatever. I might be like, oh my God, I need to like work out, you know, what this gun is, how it works out functions so i can design something you know and you start going like oh man i don't know anything about this stuff and i had to you know but like yep. if you don't do it you just i don't know you just don't do it right <laughs> like, yeah or you can choose to be like yeah i'm gonna find out about this stuff and get into it and and work it out nut it out you know try and get good at it like yeah i tend to try and use that stuff as like motivation rather than as like a deterrent um or like a yeah yeah totally yeah i mean i i think it's just a matter of yeah you like i i guess the point is that i i feel like sometimes people are um like learning how to put a lot of positive energy into your um classwork i think is and and learning how to still improve the things that you need i i think is is not something where that's going to stop as soon as you get a job right i think a lot of people are like oh i can't wait to sort of get a job and then not have to study anymore and, and that just doesn't happen in, in the art world, right? Um, it's kind of a constant improvement thing. Um, yeah. And uh, so it's it's well worth looking at, right? Like how do you, if you imagine you're working in a job now, it's just that the job is your classes, right? And, you know, how do you, how do you, how are you excited about that, right? 
Um, cause some of the assignments are good. Some of them really suit you. Some of them don't, you know, like, how do you, how do you handle that? How do you, how do you navigate that? How do you still stay, stay excited? How do you, you know, keep working on the art you want to create? Um, you know, just all, all of those things. I, I think that's like super important to, to stay on top of. I mean, I feel like I say this so much that I'm kind of like nagging people. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just um, comes up as questions all the time, right? It's, uh, yeah. So, but I think, but, I, but yeah. I honestly think like a huge part of the, a huge part of the, um, like the answer to that is, the, the speed, right? It's like how because like what I was saying about speed painting, right? Everyone's like, oh yeah, that's cool, but like, no, you don't understand. Like, I, I'm not doing speed painting, like I really wanted to. Mm -hmm. like a lot of like i felt like i was not a an, i was not a real artist because i couldn't paint and i was not a real artist because I, I didn't do speed paintings you know and that 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 was like i would really be un, i was really unhappy about that yeah and my solution was just to figure out how to draw faster that's it that's the only solution i've come up with like i haven't <laughs> been able to just be like well you know i'll just i can't do it and, and it's like not that like I understand that there's, I probably could, but I just can't muster the energy, and I don't like, like you know, the the way that those paintings are created. Like I just don't, I don't like the whole thing, <laughs> right? Like that. That's my solution. My solution isn't to sort of say, oh, when Tim finally figured out how to do speed painting, it's like no, <laughs> I never figured out how to do speed painting. I've never been able to do a good speed painting, like Whoa, you know, a it's... painting painting where you know you start out with a photo and you kind of bash stuff like. I've never been able to do that. And I've tried, I've tried so hard. And every time I do it, I kind of look at it and I'm like, you know, yeah, I could have done something better. Well, it's the same. Like, I mean, earlier on, I said the same thing where like, I wasn't doing sketching. Right. Yep. So, so we're both sort of saying the same, <laughs> same thing. Just on exactly. A different... Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Like I, Simon, I, I don't see a giant sketchbook from you all the time, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Like, and, and that's like, that's important. Um, and yeah, you know, like I, and, and a lot of that is, you know, figure, figuring that stuff out, right? Like it's, it's not, um, like I do have a sketchbook, right. But, but I actually find that the thing that makes me really want to sit down is I, I do something that's a little bit more complete like this, um, you know, cause, and, and when I was, if I do lots of stuff in my sketchbook, right. Like I kind of end up doing stuff that's a bit more like this. You know, I'll sit down for three hours and try and draw something that's more interesting. Um, otherwise, I just kind of get bored. Um, yeah, so I think a lot of it is figuring out, like, yeah, what sort of pace? You know, some people really just only want to spend ages on a painting. You know, they're only really interested if they can spend, you know, 20 hours or something. You know, they want to create that sort of finished illustration. Yeah. Um, and if you need to figure out whether that's you, and if it is, like, how do you, how do you navigate that right like how do you get better at it it's interesting like seeing everyone's like kind of predispositions to things like mm -hmm. yeah because everyone's different everyone's different yeah yeah so yeah it's a uh, yeah um, and and like me yeah i mean it's not to say that i shouldn't figure out how to speed paint right but then there's the question of like yeah is that a natural predisposition is that me just not not having the patience to actually learn something right like am i just too vain that i don't want to create something that i'm not super happy with <laughs> what is it yeah or the other thing is like well we're all going to die at some point and you've only got so many <clears throat> so much time like what do you put effort into you know yeah and you know what do, do people seem to care hey uh hey jfro thanks for the follow <laughs> um yeah, it's like, and because some people are into like three D modeling and really technical stuff, and other people are into loose sketching, and you know, like, <laughs> yeah, everyone's into all different, all different things. There's no right or wrong with that stuff. But I think yep. getting back to what we kind of started out talking about with like kind of personal pieces, I think it's just yeah, trying to um, yeah, just enjoying, just in having fun, you know, enjoying what you're doing, and yeah, you know, trying to uh, um, you know, just not spend too long on something just to just to kind of like uh yeah and, and use whatever you're doing to really be specific about 
you know, kind of trying to level up in some particular area without it being like, oh god, today I have to draw hands, you know, and I'll only yeah. I can only sketch well, hands. Draw a hand monster <laughs> or something, you know what I mean? Like draw a draw a creature with like a hundred million hands. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think the trickiest thing is again, like figuring out because um, that's sort of, I guess, like where I'm coming at it from with when I'm talking about do I, you know, do I learn how to do speed painting or not? You know, like I don't think there's a really good answer to that. Mm -hmm. um, that's like something that's constantly like sort of tricky. And I think it's really, I, I spent a lot of time sort of a little bit more alongside, a little bit more in the vein of like, I'm just, I'm not going to accept defeat. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> do, do you, one because, day, like, one day you'll do a nice speed painting. <laughs> one day, maybe. Yeah. yeah, maybe. But but I've sort of, I've sort of given up on that a bit, right? And I, I'm still not sure whether that's the right thing to do. But 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 I but I do think that thinking about that as an option is is important, right? Because th there is certainly a degree to which, you know, I, I can spend a lot of time trying to get good at everything. You know, and, and I think actually probably the more important skill is is figuring out like what what am I actually not good at, but what am I naturally inclined to do? Because then I know that I'm working in you know um, that that's sort of what I enjoy, right? Like I the I get the other way you could frame it is like how do you know whether you just need to push past yourself complaining, right? Yeah. Um, or when do you know that actually you're just sort of trying to do something that's against your nature? and it's not actually you know it's not just that it's like it, it, it's it's never actually going to go anywhere right like what what's the difference yeah that i mean that's a that's a genuine sort of you know if a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear it does it make a sound sort of question right it's like a um that's something that you really have to focus on um i, I don't think there's like a great you know obvious answer to that um i think it is genuinely complicated yeah um yeah but but i do think that doing personal pieces is super important um i think that's a major piece of the puzzle and i think figuring out how you want to do that is really important and um making sure you fit it into your life i think that's that's super important yeah how to incorporate that into your into your day <laughs> yeah see at the moment mine is like yeah i just could do a twitch stream <laughs> yes that'll that'll let me create some sort of personal piece so that's yep. my that's my plan guys just yeah we've got to get all the other <laughs> twitch streams going on that's, that's how i yep. can do some painting painting even though we're doing everything in blender anyway <laughs> yeah yep and your taste changes and stuff along the way as well right like yeah yep it's it's uh it, it's a fun exciting journey <laughs> yep yeah, but but I have I have been interested to find that yeah sometimes like sometimes these things change and sometimes they don't right like I have found that over time yeah I, I've really only I've really been interested in the idea of doing scenes right with, which have some narrative bent and I and I I can see that that has like influenced my decision making like to a huge degree um, and. Uh, you know, figuring out a way where I'm like, oh, maybe if I just figure out how to draw faster, or I, I, I do the processes that I'm actually already good at. And I just try and optimize that as opposed to trying to say, like, I'm going to learn how to speed paint. Um, like that was actually a much better solution to that problem for myself. Because I was getting I was actually getting what I wanted, right? Out of that interaction. Um, but that was not immediately obvious to me in, in any way, shape or form, right? That was, you know, that took a long time for me to sort of figure out and um yeah i've really found that that sort of three hour sort of time frame is, is what i need right and, and i think a lot of the times i would go through life just being like well why shouldn't i be able to do it differently right like why what why why can't i why can't i do this differently you know like what what what's wrong with me um and uh and i think like i i feel like i probably wasted a lot of time trying to find an answer to that i, well, I think wait, that's, wait. yeah I, I think sort of from <clears throat> kind of in my position where i've got to you know kind of get to know a lot of you know very well-known artists and things like that mm -hmm. one one thing i have noticed that seems in common with everyone is that the end goal is kind of always to create characters 
and scenes with narrative like that tends to be what everyone kind of eventually strives to do like mm-hmm. if you start with character eventually you try and get your backgrounds good enough that you can <laughs> put the two together if sure. you start with environments eventually you try and get your characters good enough that you can put characters in your environments and yep. to me that's kind of like the heart you know like it's really hard it's really hard to have those like two things and the people that can do it really well are the people that come very successful so yep. i think everyone's sort of striving to do that type of thing right yeah yeah right? it's like yep. you know what i mean yes yeah yeah because i mean i could do i could do characters right and i could kind of put them in a pin-up scene but yeah i just wanted to i always just wanted to sort of you know do more mm. um yeah and it's a yeah it's a it, it is like a constant constant challenge um but you know I, I think it's really important that like i feel like that what i'm trying to say is like for me when i went against like my sort of natural instinct i always lost you know what i mean yeah. and um it was very hard for me to tell when i wasn't just sort of being weak about it right like it took me a long time to to get that sort of get my spidey sense going where I'd sort of be able to tell, no, no, this is not me just sort of making lame excuses. I'm actually not good at this. And I don't think I'm ever going to get good at this because I just <laughs> don't really like it. I like, the, I like the idea of it. You know yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but I, I really just, I'm not interested in this enough. You know, I'm wanting to do it for the wrong reasons, right? That's the best way, right? It's like, I'm not actually trying to do this for the right reasons. And I think the people like, you know, cause the other thing is realizing, you know, it's super easy to kind of like all art, you know, it's not like sort of, you know, some people are like that where they're like, I just hate all of this sort of art. Like most people who are artists, you know, have an appreciation for all types of art, you know, like, Oh, that's sort of portrait painting or, you know, that's cool. You know, this is this type of painting. Like, that's cool. Um, The question is like, what are you going to do? You know? and, And it's like, we can't do everything. Um, especially with those personal projects oh yeah and i like i really think that over time you're kind of like tastes mature and maybe it's not even taste it's like your understanding of art matures i like i've got this story where i distinctly remember uh, in year 12 i had to do like my you know art whatever theory piece on Mm -hmm. arthur arthur streeton right and at the time i was really into like Oh, like Warhammer, you know, like kind of like everything I do was like all fantasy, you know, goblins, elves, you know, all yep. that kind of stuff. And I remember doing this assignment, just being like, "Oh my gosh, this is the pits! Like, why do I have to <laughs> write about this? Like, Arthur Streeton, dude. Like, you know, who is this guy? This is lame, you know. Like, all that yep. kind of stuff." Anyway, uh, about I don't know, two or three years ago, I went to the Sydney Gallery, and they have a whole bunch of Arthur Streeton paintings there, and I'm just like these are amazing (laughs) and like you know just to just to think that my taste has like completely flipped in that time it's not even that it's kind of like so back when i was like 17 it's like i didn't i just didn't really understand i didn't i didn't quite get what was going on i didn't really I, i didn't get that like those painters were kind of paving the way for like what we're doing now and yeah all that kind of stuff and they're still kind of doing the same stuff that we do now right like whereas i think as you kind of get older and you know you kind of mature in your understanding of of things it kind of goes like all full circle so once again like you guys now if you're you know younger or whatever i don't know who's watching the stream but like yeah you can kind of really develop that stuff over time as well right that kind of appreciation for things or maybe your understanding of what you like what you don't like you know you want to do animation you want to do 3d modeling do you want to do concept art within that what are the you know do you want to do comics do you want to do video games do you want to do film like all that stuff can develop and change over years and to say that like it can't is like super (laughs) yeah (laughs) super kind of like naive and i think that um yeah it's just yeah it's stick with the process guys like you'll you'll develop that stuff over time you know um and the fact that you guys are in watching streams and doing classes and all that kind of stuff is just you're all heading in the right direction i agree 
So this is cool, um, Tim. This is starting to come together. You've, uh... I'm, I'm almost. <clears throat> it's starting to look like something. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. If, if you want to hang around for another few minutes, it probably I'll get bored of it because it will. Yeah, we can. We can start reaching that. I think it's going to reach that time where I'm like. We can do another. We can do another ten minutes. Yeah, let's do that. <clears throat> we got to get that character sorted, Tim. Character sorted. No, mm. it's just a. That's the. It's a sacrificial. He's a dude. Sacrificial lamp. See, I'm trying not to make it about the character. <laughs> Is that so you don't have to draw the character? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Save it. Um, yeah. So again, like this is my, and, and I think another thing is like, you know, um, a, a lot of those things that I was talking about are, are very, it, it, it's not like they're just, <laughs> it's, it's not like it's just about sort of, you know, what, what art you like to look at, right? A lot of it is like how you like to create art. I think that's super important to, to consider. Um, you know, I like, I like looking at, you know, some sort of art, but generally for me, if I, you know, if, if I have to spend more than a certain amount of time on it, I, I'm just not interested. Um, and I know that not, not as in like, Oh, I think that's lame. I just know I'm yeah. like, yeah, no, I've, I've been there, done that. Um, I, I won't, <laughs> I, I just know that I won't have the energy to, to, to do that. Um, and, and that, t that, I think that stuff takes, takes quite a long time to, to really sort of, um, get, get your head around, um, just understanding like, you know, what's the process. And the other thing is like, you know, I, I really like the idea of a process that functions like you build it up, like the speed painting, you know, which is probably more like the way you would tend to paint Simon. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I like I like the idea of that. I like when I'm doing it because you see it sort of emerge. Um, but I find that the way my brain works is much more like this, where kind of I I, I start doing one thing and then I kind of don't really know how it's going to turn out until <clears throat> the end. Um, I think also that like having stuff emerge thing is like a very practice skill too. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Yeah, but I see but when I see like Mullins paint, I like. I remember even like watching, it was really interesting because like when I went to Lightbox Expo, like yep. I saw Mullen's painting and yep. I was like, I literally only had to watch him paint for like five minutes because I was like, this is exactly how I expect Mullen's would paint this stuff. <laughs> like I can watch this for three hours and I'll still be no, I'll still be no closer to figuring out how he paints because he right. just he just paints it like you would think like you look at the picture and you're like I don't know how he's doing this and then you look at him painting it's like yep I still don't know how he's doing it you know what I mean because right. he just sits there and just doo, 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 and he will just work on another little shadow shape here and another shadow shape up there and right. just and it just like emerges like you said right and but all the time it's kind of like he he probably has a plan you know like he's he kind of knows where it's going through that experience not like he's looking at the page and just knows what image is going to do but yeah he knows how to like problem solve it all the time because of like he's done thousands and thousands and thousands of paintings like this right so yeah totally yeah it's um yeah don't worry guys everyone has that <laughs> everyone has those feelings <laughs> yeah yeah <clears throat> And the whole like that's why I kind of hate that whole like YouTube speed painting kind of like it yeah. just appears things because I hate, I think that's a heap of shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, most of the time everybody that's doing that has an idea of what they're doing before they paint it, and then they paint it. It's like oh, this happened really fast, you know? Yeah, I just do this all the time. It's like no, not really, <laughs> not really. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you mean that sort of thing where people like the, the speed painting thing or the people, cause I noticed that happens a lot with sort of the, again, the, the YouTube artists who are a little bit more entertainers. It's often they kind of, yeah, they're like, ah, oh, and here's look, finally it's here. You know, let's yeah. skip the actual, the actual bit where you do the drawing and yeah. uh, let's just kind of, you know um, yeah. I mean, th there is a way that I think, um, you know, people imagine that art is done right. Like that, that sort of, you know, you imagine artists just kind of go like, Doom, do, and we know what we're doing all the time. And, you know, like, I feel like there is that sort of, there's that type of art. And, and that's obviously, as we know, like, that's not how art is actually made. Um, but, you know, it's sort of fun to think of that. And, and I think, yeah, speed painting is in that range where it's kind of, it sort of feels very fun because people are kind of are like figuring out how to do sort of art, you know what I mean? In these kind of like very, um, 
you know, compressed timeframes and that feels very fun. I mean, I think that's one of the main appeals that people have with like the Kim Jong-ji um, and those sort of people who, who are really good at sort of painting, you know, live, you know, and, and you can sort of do it is like the way Kim Jong-ji like draws is I think how everyone thinks that all artists draw <laughs> is you just kind of draw it and you're like, ah, oh, cool. Um, yeah. And, and, I, and I think like that's, uh, you know, again, that's super interesting. Um, <laughs> what, what I love, I just, what I love about Kim Jong-ji, right, is like people are like, how do you do this, right? And then, so you go to like a conventional weather where he is and you, you will stand around and he's doing a huge mural on the wall. I was like, how do you, how do you do this, right? And then you, he finishes that mural and then he goes back to his booth and he's got all these books to sign. So for the next three hours, all he does is just sit there and draw shit the whole time. Yeah. Oh my gosh, how does like Kim Jong Un do all this it? stuff? And he just does it because he's just doing it all the time. Like yeah. the amount of drawing mileage he has is just nuts. You know what I mean? Like he just, yep. I, I just find it hilarious. I'm like, just look at him. He does it because that's all he does. Yeah. <laughs> I, like yep. we go out for dinner and like all he does the whole time during dinner is like draw on like napkins. You know yep. what I mean? Like he just, there's never a minute in the day where he's not doing it. I suppose he has, like he's got family and kids and stuff at home and I guess there's times where he's doing it, but he's just always drawing. Like yep. it just, yeah, you know, it's just nuts. Yeah, yeah, it's like not actually a secret. It's not a secret. Um, <laughs> he just got so good because no. he just draws all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, but I mean, <sighs> the question is like, the question I would be asking is again, like, you know, what... You know like how do you feel about drawing yeah you know i mean like what what do you yeah you know like what 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 makes you excited about drawing and i think it's like i don't think he's going to have an answer but that's that's sort of the answer that's the question i feel like well i know. think he's in love with it <laughs> yeah you just you just so used to doing it and have such positive associations with it that yeah, yeah. you know it, well it and it feels... doesn't doesn't hurt when you get millions of followers and you know people buying your sketchbooks it just it just yeah it fuels that passion even more right yeah mm -hmm. and i think he's like yeah having having some success uh doing that where like again people seem to like the way that he's creating it and you know um there's like a good connection there yeah um but it is kind of funny because yeah i remember just i think it was even at ctn or something you know sorry <laughs> it was kind of like yeah so how does he get so good and you kind of think about it it's like he's the person like he's the person at this like there's 30 50 000 people that go to this convention and out of those fifty thousand people he drew the most yeah this whole time <laughs> you know what I mean? it's yep. kind of like yeah and you sort of think about it you're like hmm yeah no yeah i get how this works <laughs> yeah well it almost seems like yeah i mean it's kind of because I, I think i did watch a, an interview that he was doing uh somewhere i think it was maybe like a proco interview with him and you can tell that, yeah, he's kind of like, he's, he's answered all these questions before. Right. Yeah. And it's kind of like, it's almost sort of, it's, it's a bit interesting that kind of people keep asking them. <laughs> right. Um, and I yeah. think, yeah, you can sort of see like, you know, it, it almost seems like, I think he was sort of saying that even in that, that he kind of draws while he's talking to people <laughs> so that they don't ask him questions. <laughs> you know <laughs> so he doesn't have to learn english yeah so he doesn't have to ask uh and i was like ah, oh, yeah that is interesting right um yeah so it's uh anyway i mean i, I think that <clears throat> yeah it's it's well worth sort of um examining those things because uh, i think it's there are oh. the, the aunt the answer is always we always know the answer but the question is like a little bit more yeah, it's more nuanced than that. I'm enjoying how far you've taken this from like your kind of uh, line drawing, you know? Right. <clears throat> like that's kind of cool how you've pushed the values and stuff around. Like you've really, um, yeah, I think you've, I think you're really kind of like understanding your technique of how you like kind of do the last 10, 15% on this, you know, which, yes. I, which I think is really like also when you're starting out like that's a big thing is like learning that process that last 10 percent of how you just your little tricks how you finish everything off and yeah you know, i think that's uh that can take stuff from looking kind of mediocre to looking like really awesome yep students yeah. as well 
So, yeah. Yeah. And just, yeah. Knowing, knowing the process, right? Like that's, <clears throat> and, and that's where, I mean, that's sort of what I was saying is like, you know, a, a lot of these things, they, they, yeah, they seemed a little bit, it was a little bit kind of like, Oh, how, how am I going to do that? Or, you know, how's this going to work? Right. You know, am I able to sort of, you know, create a scene. And, and a lot of it is just realizing like, you know, probably if I got to, you know, previously, if I sort of got to about one and a half hours in, I, I would feel like, ah, oh, there's no way this is going to go anywhere, you know? Um, because, you know, it's, it's sort of not happening. Right. <laughs> like I, I'm, it yeah. doesn't look like anything. Yeah. And I think it's mainly that, yeah, I just did it enough that I kind of realized like, oh, actually, if I just keep going, um, you trust in that process kind of thing trusting the process yeah, yeah. and and sort of really yeah it's a big and one. Then doing the process uh, enough that i i heard pete talking about that in the class the other night where he's kind of talking about the loomis head and he was mm-hmm. like look he, he goes like sometimes the loomis head construction kind of looks a bit dumb and he's like i just don't think it's going to work but he goes if i just keep drawing it and like trusting in it it kind of works out every time <laughs> right. just in terms yeah, yeah. of like the, like, like the placement of stuff he's like when you start yeah. laying it in that it sometimes looks the nose looks a bit kind of high and the mount you know but he's like once you get the drawing done you get like oh no it, it worked and it's just kind of like i just trust in that those kind of like general measurements of things and yep it's just it's a similar thing right where you're just trusting in that process that you do it over and over again that you're not uncomfortable with it anymore yes yeah. And I think it like, you know, the best way to think about that, right, is sort of, you know, just imagine if you like if I gave anyone this, if I gave you this painting, Simon, like again, like before I sort of start to fiddle with it and I was like, well, OK, here you go. I've done most of it. It's pretty much finished. There's, you know, the rest of it is is not very artistic. It's just I you're not going to know where I'm going with it. Yeah. You know, um, and so just like having 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 that there is no guarantee of like do, do you know what i mean like like seeing the process is is no is no guarantee that it's going to look good right like it often looks weird yeah like if, and i you know like you know if, if you give me a jamie jones painting that's half finished i'm not going to be able to make it into a jamie jones painting no i totally know what you mean and and everyone has that like there's kind of like a fork in the road moment as well where you can take these things like 85 different directions as well totally it's like it's the direction you choose to go that makes it kind of yours yes yeah yep well i'm pretty i think i'm pretty much done with this i'm gonna make it cool. green because that's what i always do <laughs> if i kind of run out of ideas like, yeah mine's blue mine's blue i always have this like it's like i always go to photoshop and start doing you do this painting it's kind of got this different mood and then you adjust the things enough to like where it just becomes like Oh, it's the same one I do every time. The same one. (laughs) Yeah. It's funny because every artist like that, like the the more close you get with people, you see this like, obviously Brian Winer teaches heaps of classes with us and I'm like, oh, Brian's doing his sculpting thing again that looks exactly like Brian's in every class. (laughs) Yeah. But students don't know it because like, you know, they're just seeing it for that first time or whatever. But you just do that as an artist. That's your kind of tendencies and stuff. But um, yeah, yeah, it it is kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot it. of those things are like, you know, if it's again, you know, if, if I'm done with the painting, right, if it's if, you know, if I'm out of time, um, you know, I, I have like a bunch of things that I know tend to work like, you know, uh, like homogenous color schemes and things yeah. that you know we're going to sort of turn out all right. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but with this, again, I, I, I was sort of doing it. I, there's a foreground, there's a middle ground, there's a background. And I sort of had in my mind that it would be a glade. But I didn't really know how to get that happening. So, yeah, I was kind of just fiddling around with it. But I feel like that sort of has that feel. All we need now is like probably God rays, right? That would be give it the <laughs> ultimate. <laughs> the ultimate right? speed painting finish, you reckon? Yeah. <clears throat> See, you're learning, Tim. You're learning. Yep. <laughs> just... Well, that's, yeah. That's some... <laughs> I think that's too much you need. You need a different, you need a different. Yeah, there we go. Just a bit of, and um, yeah, there, there's tons of those, tons of those little things. Like I sort of, um, and and that, I think that is why, like working on, um, you know, working collaboratively is is super valuable because you know you you can, you know, find some of those new sort of tricks and things like that 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 sort of work nicely. Um, yeah, you know, I often 
like, you know, if I get art directed directly, like sometimes they're working on those cards and I'll get someone will sort of tell me like, you know, I'll, I'll get an actual feedback where it's like, here's the paint over, you know, and sometimes people have got really cool ways of doing things. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, just like, again, just little tricks and tips. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't think of doing that. I mean, that's my like, that, that's why I like working in a studio, you know, because you yep. kind of have that almost team mentality of, you know, everyone kind of helps each other along with, with stuff. I, I really, I think that's why some of the guys that have worked in at CW Studios, like in our kind of animation studio team, like have, have really gone on to get jobs elsewhere because they <laughs> they just get experience of like working within a team and having this level of expectation of like, this is how good your kind of work should look. And so you have to step up to that kind of plate. Otherwise, you're kind of not being overly useful. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah, and, and, and then you learn from people and, yeah, it's, just, yeah, it, it's cool. Yep. I mean, you can still do it when you're freelancing and doing stuff by yourself. It's just, you just do it in a different kind of way. But Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I, well, there's, there's, there's two other tricks I normally use if things are looking. And so well, someone said of, floating particles. Floating particles, yep. yeah. We need some floating particles. <laughs> yeah, which again is like, you know, there's a million ways to sort of do those. Oh, that's too much Gaussian blur. Blur. Gaussian blur. Oh, that's way too much for that. Yeah. Just like a, a little bit. Um, and again, these are these are things that I've sort of figured out help a line drawing to feel more atmospheric. And I feel like they're kind of a lot of them are sort of stylistic things that I sort of, you know, add in that are that are not really like that clever, right? <laughs> You know, they're, they're not sort of things that I'm sort of saying like, oh, this is good. They're, they're just sort of, you know, when you are doing a speed painting, right? Like another one is sort of if we go um, like add some noise, right? So this will be the last thing and then we're done. Cool. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll often sort of do that. Like filter noise, noise, add noise. CN. Okay. And I often find like that's a bit, it ends up a bit sort of can be bigger if you want like more of a real look to it set that to overlay and that's often again like a bit much um but yeah other things you can do is like try and right if we take everything and then we like filter blur right just blur everything a bit and then you can kind of Again, just blur out that foreground stuff a bit. Like so much of, um, you know, so much of like filmic post-processing, I think is exactly that, right? It's just like little bits. There's so much grade that goes on. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah. So that's, we, we went 20 minutes over, which is not what you should do for a speed painting. And that's why I don't like doing speed paintings because I'm like, ah, no, I can make well, this look you better know, like if You I had said time. three hours, right? So you, yeah, yeah, totally. So yep. you kind of like with another half an hour, I can see how you can get it pretty refined into the. Yeah, there's there's always like me. things you can do. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, the, again, like the I'm like, oh, the, the last thing I do is I feel like yeah, I need more. And again, you, it's always like sort of stepping back and, and looking at it, but so I feel like like that would be better if that kind of went into silhouette so it feels a bit more like again the light is kind of coming down um because again that's not like there's not a lot of detail there yeah so it's probably best that like again that's like a bit more of a silhouette but yeah i think apart from that there's not much more i can do go cool. that's that's it we're over but you know like that was two and a, that's probably two hours and 20 minutes of chatting yep with lots of um, talking and yeah so probably could have probably <laughs> if i was really focused and pushing which I, I i always liked i like to be able to sit back a bit more look at it you know go get a go get a beverage and think about it and kind of look at it and yep. you know I, I don't like being pressured you know like that much I, I like you know being pressured for three or four hours to do something like this is like that's enough pressure um but but yeah fine-tuning that time I, I think is like super important but if I know like, oh, I can create something that's kind of cool, right? You know, like, and we created it in sort of two hours. That means I can schedule it, right? I know I can sort of say, well, it's like 
10 o'clock at night now and I could maybe do something before 12 and that's when I'm sort of scheduled to go to sleep you know no one else in the house is you know do any other people are occupied you know what I mean so I'm like oh, I could do that yeah that's super valuable to, to know that um, because that means I can schedule stuff or I can say you know maybe I'll just try and get up two hours earlier you know and do something before I you know head to work or you know maybe there's like a bit of time it means I can schedule that you know I could even say you know I'll you know start it in the morning you know, get to the point where the lines are done and then I'll kind of, you know, finish, you know, because probably the lines were done about an hour in. Yep. Then I could kind of, yeah. So the timing I think is really important for, um, yeah, for, 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 for managing your motivation. Let's put it that way. Yep. Yep. Mm. Cool. Cool. Well, thanks, Tim. Anyway, and that's th- all thanks, guys, for tuning in. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys, and asking questions. Yep. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. We're going to sign off. And uh, yep. we'll see you guys in see a guys. fortnight. Yeah, in a fortnight. Sounds good. Okay. See you, Simon. Thanks, guys.